A very good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon from wherever you are. Of course, I'm glad that you are tuned in and you are watching Afrique 24 Hour TV. Welcome. Today is a special day. Today being Saturday, we are going to have a politic, uh, politic show, a show that brings us together as we try to look at what has been happening in the country in the political arena. So before we go straight into politics, I also have to start by updating you on some of the things that are happening across the world. Of course, at Afrique, we are connecting you with African stories from wherever you are. So if you're joining me for the first time, just ensure that you click on the subscription button and you subscribe and become a member. That is the only way that you can be able to support this program. So top of the stories, of course, it's a sad weekend as Russia has been attacked by the terrorists and about 133 people have lost lives. This is something that is so terrible. It's something that is so sor sor uh, uh, sorrowful that uh, people have lost lives through the terror attack. I know the issue of terrorism. трагедия мы здесь в крокусе работают пожарные площадь возгорания очень заметная все остальное We're still on this breaking news out of Russia. That is the Crocus Hall, the music hall that is currently on fire. Russian media, the TASS organization, is reporting that the roof of this is partially collapsing as we speak. What we know is that it appears three gunmen, Russians are calling them terrorists, entered this concert hall, shooting on their way in and inside the hall, killing multiple people. At least 40 people are dead, 100 are injured. That number number is likely to go up. It is a massive emergency scene around this concert hall. All right, uh, what you just seen on your screen, that is what is happening in Russia. At least uh, 133 people lost their lives and uh, several people uh, who have uh, uh, been injured. So that and many other stories are also going to form part of our discussion. Of course, uh, um, hosting this show today in the county 041 that is CIA county the county of heroes the county of barack obama and the county of uh, james uh, orengo so if you are joining me for the first time i've just uh, uh, told you that you can start by subscribing to our channel that's the only way you can support this program of course i'm also having some other panelists and others who are also going to join as we are going to have a special politic uh show and we are going to discuss a lot of issues a lot has happened in this country in the political arena uh, right from political intolerance that you've seen happening in the western part of the country whereby we've been seeing some chaos uh, pitting the transoya governor the fierce uh Natembea, and the national assembly speaker moses Masika Wetangula. Of course, we will also be able to get some time to weigh in what is happening in the politics of the Western parts of this country. Without forgetting the nurses and the, or the doctor's strike that has, re, uh, has gone for a week now, we are having uh, most patients uh, that are really struggling to get uh, uh, the doctor's attention as uh, the Minister of Health that is led by none other than CS uh, Susan Nahumicha have insisted that they're not going to pay the interns or they're not going to uh, implement the CBA fully. So we are going to look at those uh, stories and many other stories, uh, including, uh, if you look at our topic today, we are going to look at the Handshake Chronicles. So when you look at the Handshake Chronicles, remember that Handshake have taken place in this country, not today, uh, I, it has always been there. So it is something that has always been taking place. So the visitors or the panelists here are going to delve and try to tell us what are the real purpose of these handshakes that we've been seeing in this country. What have they achieved or what do the initiators of the handshake plan to achieve with their handshakes? So 
before I move on, I just want to invite you to this conversation. There are so many ways you can participate in this conversation. One of them is that you can use the link that I'm going to share on the comment section, join the studio and be part of the panelists. But if you so wish to stay without joining uh, at the studio, you can also use the comment section. Let me know your view. Let me know you, if you have a question or any concern, you will be part of this conversation. So I'm joined today by one and only Mzalendo, I think uh, you know him. And uh, today uh, he's going to give us some very instant uh, information on this handshake. He's also going to give us his view on the chronicles of the handshake that has been taking place in this country, maybe since independence up to the last one that we can we can see that is taking place between Raila Odinga and William Ruto. I'm also joined by one and only Boniface Kimanzi, uh, straight away from some parts of Kambani. I'll give them an opportunity to introduce themselves, say hi, and maybe give their thought as they uh, uh, sympathize with or as they condole with the people who've lost their lives in the Russian terror attack that hit the world yesterday. So I'll start with Mzalendo. Uh, good evening. Uh, I don't know the time it is where you are, so maybe you can just tell us the time where you are joining from and take uh, a minute to say something or uh, uh, condole with the, uh, the people who perished in the Russian terror attack. Uh, it, it's a sad day to the world at large because uh, we've been de dealing with these issues of terrorism and uh, they, they've really caused a lot of pain. The other day they were in Israel, uh, back at home, my country, Kenya. We remember the attack on uh, on the U.S. Embassy in Kenya uh, that uh, made uh, so many people lose their lives, and some people are maimed up to today. Uh, so this is, this is a terrible uh, day uh, for the people of Russia, especially uh, those who are attending that uh, particular concert. Uh, they didn't have to lose their life because of uh, uh, some uh, crazy uh, human beings uh, shooting randomly. Uh, to uh, to put their point across. So my condolences goes to the family of the Russians and uh, any other person who is not a Russian who was probably in that concert. Uh, it is it is a sad moment, and uh, we really uh, sympathize and empathize. And my prayers goes to all the family members and to to those who have lost their lives. I believe that uh, you'll find some comfort in the Lord and in some prayers. Thank you. Right, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, Zalendo. Indeed, it's a sad day in the world. Imagine losing 133 people, it is not an accident. Uh, these are deaths that are caused by a fellow human. It shows how inhuman some people have decided to be. And of course, uh, the entire world needs to condemn terrorism because uh, the terrorists don't have religion. Terrorists don't have a tribe. The terrorists don't have a race. So a terror is a terror, whether he's a black terror, he's a white terror, or whether he's a Christian terror or a Muslim terror. They don't have religion. These are people who are heartless. The people who are inhuman. And they need to be condemned. And we pray that one day the world that we live in will be a peaceful world whereby people will have to adhere to the human rights and respect the right of the right to life that is enshrined to each and every individual. So Bonfas, uh, Karibu Sana, Johnny Aleo, uh, you can say hi to the viewers, uh, tell us where you're joining us from, and maybe you can also say a word or your view on what happened in Russia. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Leo, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And uh, I want to welcome all our viewers and our followers who are watching this uh, political show, wherever they are. They are welcome in Africa to force so that they can give their contributions when it comes to comments and also you can join live studio. Yeah, personally, I think uh, we have been here today during Dimbal Africa. And those who have been there, they already saw us uh, doing Dimbal Africa. Uh, my name is Bonfes Kimanzi. I've been here. 
and I'm joining from Nairobi, Kenya, capital city, uh, Dagoretti, uh, Kona, on your way to Karen. So I am happy to be here today, and uh, I want to uh, pass my condolences to uh, the people of Russia because uh, uh, those are innocent people who are affected, and you know that uh, whenever those things happen, uh, most of the people suffer because. Uh, uh, they don't know uh, when these things happen. These things happen in an impromptu uh, reactions. They happen instantly. You don't know what happens. Then uh, you are there enjoying, having good time with your family, and then boom, uh, people come and they start to attack you. So I want to pass my heartfelt condolences to those people who are affected by this uh, uh, terrorist attack in Russia. And uh, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, needs to do. Uh, a lot of work because uh, uh, the country is suffering and also uh, they need to come together between the Russia and Ukraine so that they can solve the conflicts that have been uh, taking place in those two countries and uh, I think a lot of lives have been lost and uh, in those 133 people I saw uh, some innocent young ones suffering they were affected by that attack so uh, it is so heartless to see such a kind of things happening in their country. And uh, we extend our uh, heartfelt condolences to them because uh, they have the right to live. And everyone has la uh, the, the right to live. And uh, that is one of the things that uh, makes people to enjoy this uh, planet Earth. So I, I think uh, they need to solve issues that are taking place in those two countries between russia and ukraine thank you thank you thank you thank you that is wonderful that is wonderful uh, uh bonifaza uh thank you so i don't know where I, i'll start there's a lot that we need to talk about if you look at uh, the topic our headline we are talking of the handshake chronicles so zalendo maybe uh being a senior member here uh, i think you've watched uh, uh, several transitional governments taking place in Kenya. Uh, some of us, maybe the first transition we saw is when Moi was handing over to President Kibaki and when President Kibaki was handing over to Uru Kenyatta and Uru Kenyatta handing over to uh, uh, the, the current president, uh, William uh, Ruto. So maybe if you can just brief us, uh, we are looking at this thing called handshake in the context of whereby after political contest, the people who a hotly contested for the seat gets a way of sitting on a table and uh, talking uh, 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 having some uh, political agreements or having some political talks whereby they agree that they are not going to oppose each other but they are going to work towards a, a specific goal so maybe you can just brief us on uh, how kenyan found themselves using this term handshake and uh, maybe in this kind of handshake how many so far have happened before we go into details on uh, who and where and why they happened uh i think the the more uh, can you hear me leo i can hear you loud and clearly uh thank you for that question i think this is one of the questions that uh, have not been addressed for a very long time and many 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 people are avoiding especially especially the the political class uh, they seem to avoid the issue of the handshake i remember the first significant handshake that uh, we witnessed was in 2007 when uh, kibaki and raila uh, came together to form a the Grand Coalition government. Uh, this was informed by uh, the post-election violence that took place in our country. And the international community uh, took friend and friends of Kenya uh, came together, together with the civil society, uh, came together to, under the church, came together and uh, reconciled the two factions. And that that gave birth to the to the Grand Coalition government, of which the Right Honorable Raila Mung Lodinga uh, was appointed the first prime and the second prime minister of the Republic of Kenya. Uh, that is a significant uh, part of our history. Uh, thereafter, 
elections have been very, very hotly contested in the Republic of Kenya. And more so in uh, the last election and the previous one. Uh, after Mwai Kibaki then came Uru Kenyatta, uh, Uru Kenyatta could not govern uh, the country uh, perfectly. Uh, remember what happened between Uru and Raila Odinga. Uh, they had to go for a rerun in, uh, in their last election. So after the rerun, after the rerun, Raila did not contest, uh, did not contest, and uh, that caused a lot of animosity among his supporters. Why uh, he didn't contest? So many people still ask questions up to today. But it was so categorical and clear that uh, without the reforms in the electoral uh, electoral system, uh, he's not going to uh, contest. The results who are going to be the same. I remember uh, Ruto and uh, Uru were a pair in that particular election. So consequently, they went to the election and they won uh, the election. Now, the war of words uh, began. Uh, the country could not be governable. And in 2018, uh, it was around March 9th, 2018. Uru Kinyata and Raila Odinga shook hands. I remember the significant handshake was at Harambe House, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, and everybody was like, this is what we've been waiting for. At least there was calm uh, in the nation after the handshake. No. What developed later on after the handshake is, of course, uh, the Jubilee Party, of which Uru had come into power, uh, felt like this is not, uh, some members felt like this is not uh, what the right thing that the president is doing with somebody who has been our political opponent. Remember, our elections are very, very violent, uh, both uh, physical and verbal. Our politicians uh, don't actually articulate policies. Uh, they are very, very combative, as you can, you see even in um, in recent times. Uh, what you see on the media is just combative politics. There's no time that they have dialogue. Even if you go to the Senate, you go to the to Parliament. It is just combativeness. There's no solution. There's no coming together as leaders. The only time they come together is when they're discussing their their salaries. But when it is a matter of me and you, they either walk out of parliament or give some flimsy excuses that they cannot debate uh, bills that are affecting us directly. So back to our story. So Jubilee members were disgruntled and uh, that's so uh, the faction led by uh, William Ruto, and Gashagwa, the Ichungwas, uh, the Rininyoros, uh, form an alliance. Yeah, so Oro's government now internally started becoming unstable. Although the country was calm, but there was no political stability in terms of, uh, in terms of services to the people. Uh, he could not constitute a cabinet for a long time, I remember. Um, that is what happened between uh, Uru Zansek and, and, and Raila. Then uh, I want to take you back to the NASA Brigade. The NASA Brigade, again, after the handshake between Raila and, uh, and Uru, Something happened in NASA. NASA, NASA. Some members in NASA, like Mdavadi, felt like this is this this should not have happened, and uh, they started they started you know breaking away from from Rail Odinga, and up to today they have not reconciled. Now the 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 <laughs> handshake between uh, William Ruto and Rail Odinga is now going to give birth to another political force 
that will be disgruntled with William Ruto and the other faction that will be not be happy with Raila Odinga. You've already started seeing uh, Eugene Momalo and the groups forming the same same formation that we had in uh, the previous years. So our politics has been informed with that. Uh, let me just stop there uh, for uh, you to come in. I will continue with uh, those analyses as we go on. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you so much, um, Zalendo, for uh, taking us uh, through the history of handshake that has happened in this country. And indeed, you'll find that in most of the cases that we are having these handshakes, uh, there was some uh, problems, like uh, the person who formed the government wasn't able to have a total control, meaning uh, the opposing uh, individual was also controlling some masses that are making uh, the person forming the government and able to maybe run smoothly. You've talked of the handshake uh, between uh, the former president, uh, uh, Kibaki. may his soul rest in peace. You've talked of the handshake uh, between the uh, the former president, Uru Kenyatta. And uh, we are currently, actually there's some things you can't run away from. I, I know some people might say that we are preempting something that is not there, but what is happening currently, there is some good relationship between uh, the former prime minister and uh, the, his competitor, that is the current president, uh, William Ruto. So, Bonnie, a, a question that I just want to ask you, if you look at these handshakes that have been happening, there's something that is common. You'll find that the people who've been having these handshakes, we are talking of uh, Moi Kibaki, we are talking of Uhuru Kenyatta, and now we are talking of William Ruto. You know, these are three different individuals, but there's somebody, uh, uh, Rail Odinga, it remains a, a constant factor, meaning it doesn't change. Yeah, the rest are variables in that case. So, what do you have to say on that? What do you have to say on that? The fact that we've had different handshakes, but there's a common factor. There is a constant in these kind of handshakes that are taking place. I just want your humble opinion, irrespective of what people say. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Leo, and. Uh... I want to say, uh, when it comes to this uh, antique that has been taking place for a long time, and uh, only one party is involved, uh, Raila Molodinga is uh, one of the uh, uh, politicians who has been uh, taking place in general elections and also leading this country for a long time. But I think uh, there is a time that uh, uh, he always uh, considers himself that uh, he, he needs to win uh, and they need to also get uh, considered when it comes to the uh, government and that is where he pops in and he accepts that handshake you know that uh, uh, azmio has been one of the biggest opposition uh, parties in kenya so uh, when raila Molodinga joins this uh, government then he definitely he kills he makes this opposition to have no power because if he is the one who is driving the government to do the work, and then he joins because of his personal uh, wants, then definitely the opposition is going to be shaken and the government will do what it wants because there's no that push. So I think uh, William Ruto uh, is very wise and he decided to make sure that he gets the hard shake so that he can uh, make sure that the government uh, is doing all what it wants because there's no pressure from opposition and uh, William Ruto uh, is very wise. I think uh, he is one of the best president that uh, uses uh, his mandula because uh, if now he has pocketed Raila Molodinga and the way uh, Raila Molodinga was calling for Mandamano, personally I was in the streets because I thought we will get that seat but again after Mandamano, there is something that happened, and Rila Molodinga was uh, pocketed, and that is now where we are having Adishek in an hidden form. This Adishek is not a, 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 it's, it's not like the others. It is in hidden form. You don't know what is happening, but definitely you can know the silence of Rila Molodinga is like it is sponsored by William Samoy Ruto. So I think uh, Rila Molodinga is. He is very trusted by Kenyans, but again, it reaches a time where he becomes so selfish and he satisfies his wants rather than making sure that Kenyans are well represented in the government through opposition. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bonifaz, and uh, my viewers, welcome once again. If you're joining me for the first time, these are Freak 24-hour TV. These are political talk show. Of course, today we are having a special politic. We are discussing matters Kenyan politics. And if you can see here, we are really discussing the Handshake Chronicles. Well, we've been taken through several handshakes that have taken place in this country, whereby people who've been opposing each other finally decide to reconcile and work together. And what we've seen that have been happening in this country is that after each and every election for the last uh, two decades, uh, if um, I may, 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 may maybe, uh, I'm, I'm not certain, but if you go by the last uh, two decades, that is the last uh, four elections, we've been having some issues after the elections where people disagree. So, Mzalendo, just a quick one. Could it be that it's normally because of the that margin is normally small that makes some the people, no, uh, no, nobody wants to accept that, okay, we've lost or we have to concede defeat. Does it mean that the race is normally that competitive to an extent that the, the, the difference is slim, making somebody feel that, okay, I think I'm the one who won the elections. Is it about credibility or is it about that steep competition that gives a slim margin? You know, uh, Leo, today as we speak, uh, this is the year 2024. Uh, Kenya is divided into two uh, into two groups and uh, we are sharply divided uh, with uh, what we call uh, tribal kings, uh, king, kingpins or uh, they're not tribal, they're political kingpins uh, because the Raila support cuts across beyond beyond tribe. So these political kingpins are the ones that divide the country. People follow them. Uh, people follow them anywhere they go. Uh, today, if Raila Odinga joins uh, William Ruto, everybody who supports uh, Raila Odinga, including Leo, my friend, will be in status, dining and whining with the current president. So it, it's a matter of principle. I, I look at it like uh, most of the leaders are not really principles and they don't know what they're fighting for. Either they are fighting for their own selfish interests and not the people of Kenya, or they put the people of Kenya's interest uh, at, at, at a certain percentage, but largely it is their interest that they are fighting for. Uh, when you go back and look at uh, the report in NADCA, the NADCA report was to prepare you psychologically to accept anything that is going to happen between uh, William Ruto and Raila Odinga. Right now, you see there is a lot of calm in Raila supporters. But a few years ago, a few years ago, you could see, I wish you had some clips, you could see how agitated Raila supporters were and saying that they would not- Muzalendo, just yeah. on that, I just maybe want to ask you, you talked of the NADCO report, that is a result of the uh, meeting or the some cooling down uh, agreements between William Root and Raila. When mm. Raila and Uhuru shook hands, they came up with something that was called the Building Bridges Initiative. And when Raila and uh, Mwai Kibaki reconciled, we had what was known as the, the National Accord, uh, which uh, if you look at these three documents, it's like they try to alter, or they try to modify our constitution. So does it mean that our constitution have not addressed the electoral issues and if so why can't we now do instead of waiting for chaos to modify our constitution why can't we just have these things sorted through a constitutional moment so that we move on do you think that when we now uh, put them in uh, yeah. constitution we don't have the same problems leo you brought a very good point a very interesting perspective that nobody is talking about the National Accord. I wish you could download the National Accord so that people can know what the National Accord was all about. The National Accord had got eight pointers, eight pointers in the National Accord. 
that uh, Justice Krigler and uh, Krigler are said must be implemented for leaders in Kenya for for as long as the national accord is not uh, is not uh, is, is not constituted in our constitution or is not addressed the issues that Krigler addressed, addressed if they were not addressed then Kenya will not be stable uh, for the remaining uh, political years that was addressed in the Kibaki term when they had uh, the issues with Raila Odinga that was addressed during the post election after the post after the post election violence so we had the three pointers of the national eight pointers of the national accord and those pointers have not been addressed why they have not been addressed Raila had a position had, had uh, Raila was in position as a prime minister he, uh, with uh, Mwai Kibaki as the president, they ought to have addressed that issue then. But why the political class, they do not want to address uh, the national accord. The national accord talks about so many important uh, points in Kenya. And again, attacks you, affects your base. It talks about uh, the land reforms. It talks about uh, uh, nepotism, tribalism. It talks about all these things. It talks about how the civil service should be constituted, the civil service. So that, that was all in the national accord. But do the politicians really want to implement that? I don't think so, because it affects their political basis uh, directly. So some of these things, some of these things, uh, politics, the politics has, has come in and they will never be implemented or even if they are going to be implemented, they are implemented in peacemeal. What we have in uh, NADCA, NADCO report, if you pull up the NADCO report, and I wish uh, one of these findings, you could pull up the NADCO report and then pull up the uh, national accord and the eight pointers, you will see a similarity of the documents. The only thing that is different is the wording. So when the, the wording is what is different, or the players are the what are what is different, and the issues that are they are addressing at this particular time is, are all the same, are all the same. So this is something that uh, we need to to look at and see uh, that our, our politicians are actually playing us to the game. They are actually playing us. They know what they are doing. Uh, they should have implemented the national accord because most of these guys who are currently in parliament, a good percentage of them were in were there in uh, Kibaki's time and they were there in Uru's time. So I have got no, I I, I have got no. Uh, there's a kid disturbing me here. Uh, I have no words. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I have no words for the political class. And uh, they ought to implement uh, those things on the shelves. They need to prepare, they pull the national accord. They need not to waste taxpayers' money with some bogus conferences, yet they know the problem, where it lies. The problem is still on the national accord. Even when we move to the next election, if they don't implement what Krigler, and Krigler report was the most was the most balanced balanced commission ever ever constituted in Kenya. And they addressed they went throughout the Republic of Kenya. Forget about this political class sitting in bombers and pretending that they are addressing our issues. The Krigler report touched each and every province maybe Kenya. if you if you just allow me a minute to take you through what was in the national accord because i'll get to you and I'll, i also want to get to bonnie to see if these things are similar or uh, the ones that are being that are popping up now are different i just want you to take it keen and you'll be able to realize some similarity so in the national accord i'll just uh, give you the description of the act an act of parliament to provide for the settlement of the dispute arising from the presidential elections of 207 formation of a coalition government and establishment of the offices of prime minister deputy prime minister 
and ministers of the government of Kenya, their functions and various matters connected with an in, in, incidental uh, to the foregoing. Number one, this act may be cited as a National Accord and Reconciliation Act to eight. Number two, this act shall come into force upon its publication in Kenya Gazette, which shall not be later than 14 days. Number three, there shall be a prime minister of the government of Kenya and two deputy prime ministers who shall be appointed by the president in accordance with this uh, section. Two, that is three, two. Eh? The person to be appointed as a prime minister shall be an elected member of the National Assembly who is in the parliamentary leader of the political party that has the largest number of members in the National Assembly or a coalition of political parties in the event that the leader of the political party has the largest number of members of the National Assembly does not command the majority in the National Assembly. Three, each member of the coalition shall nominate one person from the elected members of the National Assembly to be appointed as deputy prime minister. The prime minister shall have authority to coordinate and supervise the exe uh, e execution of the function of the affairs of the government, uh, may assign any of the coordination responsibility of his office to the deputy prime minister and shall perform such other duties that may be assigned by the president or under the law. Yeah? Uh, we had uh, the office of the prime minister and deputy prime minister shall become vacant. Those ones I think is not important. The cabinet shall consist of the president, the vice president, and the prime minister, and the two deputy prime minister. It talks of the dissolving the coalition, and uh, the prime minister and the deputy prime minister shall be entitled to salaries and allowances. So that was part of what was in the national accord. I want you to go back to this document called the BBI. It also recommended the same thing. Go back to NADCO report. It also recommends the same thing. And you'll find that uh, after the National Accord in 2008, we had an expanded executive to accommodate uh, people from both uh, political factions. Uh, when President Uru Kenyatta took power, we had an ex the, 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 the 2010 constitution limits the number of uh, uh, CS, it is constitutional, he can't go beyond the limit. But what they did, they created positions called the CAS, something that is still being challenged in court up to date. So maybe Mr. Lendo, I'll just give you a minute before I give uh, Benson, uh, sorry, not Benson, but before I give uh, uh, Mr. Kimanzi to also weigh on, uh, aren't we doing the same thing, but differently? Yes, uh, I, I, I told you, uh, now you've read it, because this is something that uh, you've been politicking and uh, you've not gone through that document. Now uh, you've seen it with your own eyes, you've seen, that it is the same same document it's the same same the only difference is that uh, we have uh, we have different players uh, and remember uh, bbi bbi came so close uh, to addressing some of these things that was in the curricular report uh, the only thing that uh, bb the, the only th the, the blueprint that was in bbi was the prime minister's position that was coming in as a uh, is called as uh, Uru, who after retirement would be coming in as the Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. So that was that was already there. But now, even in William Ruto's government, he's addressing that issue technically, but people are not realizing how he's addressing it. The new position created by uh, cabinet assistant uh, uh, secretaries, those cabinet assistant secretaries are, uh, are, actually, are actually some of uh, the things that you'll be seeing. You'll see, uh, in the in the near in the coming months and and and, and be, we we uh, let me be the first to break it in the coming months we see that people from Raila's uh, uh, opposition joining government as assistant cabinet secretaries that is going to happen whether whether you like it or not it will be, they will be part of the government and these are some of the agreements that come with these handshakes so these handshakes are not are not just for you. They are just a way of incorporating us in this large government and us sharing that piece of cake uh, at the expense of the taxpayers, uh, at the expense of the taxpayers. So we'll pay more tax taxes uh, because the government will be of course bl bloated. It will be so huge, uh, a burden to taxpayers. Uh, who is addressing that issue? Nobody seems to be addressing that issue. Nobody is interested in that issue. Uh, we are interested in uh, in uh, we 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 are in our tribal corners. 
uh, looking at our tribal kingpin, uh, probably is telling you the truth, or you know, but you are not thinking as, as a Kenyan. I, I, I and that, that's why I oppose to those who are listening and those who are out there, uh, and and the panelists here today is that forget about your tribe for a minute and think of your country as Kenya. Forget about your tribe for just one minute. Assume that if the Republic of Kenya does not have a president called William Ruto. We don't have a Rai Laudinga and we don't have a Kalonzo Musioka. How do we want our country to be? That is the question. Leo, I'll be back in a short while. Let me address some issues. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mzalendo. Uh, that's really wonderful. At least uh, you've been able to give us some instincts of what has been happening. So, Boni, you've had all these documents. You started with the National Accord. Uh, we went to BBI. We are now in Nadiko. Do we need these documents? Uh, I, I think uh, we don't need those documents. We have a Kenyan constitution that tackles all everything. So we don't need those documents. Even the OC bill, even this Nadiko, even the BBI that was rejected. We don't need those documents in our country uh, because uh, we have a lot of things to focus on. And uh, our constitution gives us uh, every direction that we can take this country uh, and we can also manage this country. So I think we don't need, we don't need those uh, documents and uh, those laws that we are now being processed and uh, being implemented in this country. I think uh, we are okay the way we are. Let's uh, make this country go on. Let's improve our developments. Let's make sure that our country catches up with the, those uh, developed countries. But again, if we are still being, uh, uh, focusing with these things, such as uh, an article and also BBI and also the housing bill, we are going to be wasted country. Let's focus with the development. Let's develop this country. I think the president has a lot of things to do. He should not be focusing with this kind of things. He's brilliant pleasant. I think he can do a lot of things rather than giving us this BPI and that report. For what? How is it going to help the normal Kenyan? How? So uh, I think these reports they are giving us here, they are the bills they are making, just to confuse the common Mwananji. I think we need to uh, develop this country. But you have the you have the power. It is high time now William Ruto gives the legacy. You want to give a legacy. He has now the handshake, which has cooled down uh, the opposition part of this government. So what do you need to do? We need to develop this country. You need to leave a legacy. You need to do something extraordinary uh, that uh, uh, let uh, Mwaki Baki and the former president, uh, Uru Kenyatta, they did not do. Let him perform, because Kenyans will always reach president by their performance. Because you hear, they always recognize the late Mze Mwaiki Bagi because of kind of things and how he used to perform in his government. So I don't think we, that we need this kind of document. I totally disagree with them because I'm not a supporter of the government. They are doing totally thank you, nonsense. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bonifaz Kimanzi, you totally disagree with them. I, I, I've been joined by one and only uh, Kenyan uh, rebel revolutionary yeah he's a rebel he's a rebellious uh, son of kenya so revolutionary how i wish i uh, i could see your face uh, are you putting on that legio maria dress or today you okay in a shot <laughs> good <laughs> good afternoon uh welcome today actually we are not uh, opposing anybody we are not discussing uh, something that is making people to oppose or propose but we are looking at the handshake chronicles i know you are following from the background We've had handshakes in this country uh, uh, right from Moi. I'll not talk of the Moi one because I didn't witness it. Maybe I was, to, I was still young. Uh, I saw the handshake between uh, Raila and Kibaki. I saw the handshake between Raila and Uhuru. And currently, I'm smelling. And of course, I'm not, I, I'm not a prophet. I, I don't intend to be one. But I can see a handshake, a working relationship between Raila and Uhuru. It doesn't mean that they need to shake the hand. And Ruto, sorry. But the kind of the politics that is playing out right now can tell you that these guys are in a reconciliatory mood 
So Kenyan revolutionary. In all these things, I know this is something that when I talk of, uh, you, you, you normally take it passionately because uh, you, 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 you are a victim of uh, the activities that happens after the elections or the post-election uh, kind of violences that later leads into this kind of uh, shaking hands. Do you think we need to be holding elections in Kenya? Why, why don't we just say that we don't need to hold election? We say so and so you'll become president. And uh, like we look at uh, those people who are aspiring to become presidents and we do an opinion poll. We know this one, we, we have the two horses. Wanasemanga parasi nimbili. So out of these two parasi, we say, wewe parasi mwingine utaingia state house, wewe parasi mwingine itakuwa handshake hivi na hivi. Kenya revolutionary. I just need your humble comment on that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Leo, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I, I just wanted to disagree with Mr. Lendo. And at first, also, the premise of your question that you asked him, uh, you kind of uh, insinuated that we need to change the constitution uh, so for us to have uh, better elections. But the problem is not the constitution. Again, uh, just because Raila Odinga, uh, you know, summoned his psychopathic followers to the streets because he felt that he lost, that does not mean that the problem is with the constitution. Okay, if you remember the judgment by that high court when they were trying to put this narco thing, the the the, the, the judge said that um, the constitution should be followed. They should go on and pick up the IBC. I mean, choose the IBC, um, whatever the, the the selection panel, and let's no, and he also added by saying that let's not delay uh, the obeying the law in the name of political expediency um so which basically he's saying is that this Raila Odinga and also who I mean uh, the current president who is breaching the constitution is breaking is mutilating uh this constitution by uh the affordable act uh sending the police in Haiti and now he wants to get this CSS Point, appointing them and the judge and then the, the courts are already ruled on that but he doesn't care because he has his brother who is now his brother who is he's sending to au they've agreed together that they will not respect the constitution so the problem in kenya is not the constitution the constitution actually addresses all these issues that we are talking about the problem is is the political class. Uh, the NADCO, Mzalendo was trying to tell us that the NADCO is, is addressing uh, <laughs> the problems of the election. The NADCO does not. The NADCO is simply uh, creating positions for these two political parties, okay? Same thing with the, uh, with the, with the BBI, okay? The National Accord was, we, we came up with the National Accord, it was supposed to be a short-term uh, solution before the new constitution was promulgated, if you remember. So once we had this new 2010 constitution, uh, we don't need this NADCO, BBI, and this nonsense that these people want to bring us. These people are criminal. Raila Dinga is a criminal. He's a terrorist leader of the terrorist group. Same as Ruto. They are brutalizing, mutilating the constitution in the name of bringing peace. So we shouldn't allow this. This is an illegality. These two are mutilating the constitution, Leo. You should understand that. And this NADGO, even the, the courts, regardless of how much you might think of them, they did something that's great, beneficial to Kenyans by saying that this NADGO thing is not anchored in law. And the affordable housing you saw... Uh, uh, okay, Kenya revolutionary, sorry. Before I finish. I'll the same finish. guys are mutilating the constitution. Anytime we are having this kind of handshake, we normally have documents that are prepared so that they can be adopted to become part of constitution, maybe an act or something like that. Eh? So, yeah. do, because if this, like the national accord was adopted, though we are, we was we were still using the old constitution. Eh? So, yes. do you think it is a good idea to come up with these documents to try and uh, make some changes or Leo, alter 
the constitution or no. we should just be told that okay let us change this constitution no. once and forever we go for a referendum and no leo listen the reason why bbi was stopped because it is it came from the president uhuru kenyatta is the one who appointed Amos Wako and the useless people, lawyers that have been during the Moi regime, to come up with this BBI. And the court said that the, the president cannot uh, uh, come up with a document and force it upon Kenyans, to force the parliament to pass it so we can go to a referendum. The same thing, the court pronounced itself by saying that uh, this NADCO, if you think about who came up with this NADCO report, it was Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa. Why are you represented at that Bomas, Bomas Center? You're not represented. Who is supposed to represent us? Our, our politicians, our representative MPs. So the matter should have been debated and initiated at the legislative body, which it was not. They brought useless people like Alonzo and Ichungwa to go discuss it at Bomas, Bomas Center, and we were paying them illegally 100 million. So you cannot bring a document and claim that this is going to help solve our problems you, you, that document, Muna agree as Kenya Kwanzaa and, and Azimio. We have 50 million Kenyans. We, we are more than some of us, most of us don't even, didn't even vote for those two party coalitions. So you can't operate outside the law and tell us that, oh, this is the solution. We, we have a problem. In fact, this problem was brought about by who? Railo Dinga and his minions. Okay? So let's not play these games. These people are, 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 are op operating illegally, and we are letting them. These people should be burning in hell, all of them. Start with Raila Odinga. Uh, and the revolutionary, uh, uh, cool down. Let me ask you this. Eh? Uh, you know that uh, Raila Odinga had a handshake with Uhuru Kenyatta. We, we, we don't know what was their long-term plan. Uh, some people try to uh, preempt that this guy's plan that shall Raila become the president, maybe there was a way he was supposed to bring Uhuru back into active politics, maybe through this prime minister, such kind of things. Eh? Uh, though. I can't say it is true. It is just a street talk. Now that uh, even Goodyear is confirming that Raila and Uruto have shaken some hands, it's a matter of truth that uh, Ruto is uh, a sworn enemy of Uru Kenyatta. And anytime no, he speaks, no, he they're wants not. They were okay. pretending. Uh, uh, just listen. Anything that uh, Ruto says, he blames Uhuru Kenyatta for everything. For the progress of this country, he gives Uhuru Kenyatta all the negative responsibility. How do you think Uhuru Kenyatta will feel if Raila, whom he had a handshake with and he thinks is his ally, have a handshake Leo, with let me help you. Ruto, who is blaming finish. him for everything, even for Leo, let lack me of rain in the you. country. You are talking Leo, too much. Let me help together. you. You are talking too much. Let me answer you. Let me help you. These people are not enemies. If if Uhuru was the enemy of with Ruto, Ruto should have been should have taken the land that the Uhuru the Kenyatta family has been stealing since independence, and he, he could have arrested him for the crimes that he committed before. Okay, if they were really enemies. Okay, these people are friends. Raila Odinga's main purpose in Kenya is to stop a grassroots revolutionary movement from rising. That's why he's always in the opposition. We gave him power in 2007. You hear me, Leo? Leo is, is, is I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a freeze, but hopefully he'll come back. But yeah. anyway, we, we gave him power in 2007. Him, we sworn him in as the people's president, and he refused. He went back and I can shake hands with the loser, Uhuru Kenyatta. So why are we surprised that he's in an he's, an, he's in a handshake with uh, with uh, what's his face, uh, uh, Ruto? Okay, I can't even blame Ruto, but Ruto is not an enemy with Kenyatta. He in politics too, and These people drink together. They are family friends. They do everything together. Anyway, let me hear from you. I don't want to be the one talking. I don't know where Leo went. Uh, continue, continue, continue. Maybe the network uh, has the problem on his end. Yeah. So what I want to tell Kenyans is this. Let's not be fooled by these games, by these politicians. These political elites are in one group. They, their families are friends. They do the things, everything. Wanna to pang a sisi wana inchi. Right? Just like Muzalento just mentioned to us, every time we have a 
handshake, you see there's a new politi political coalition uh, is being formed. But at the end of the day, Utaona Raila will be on the opposition. Utaona Taruri 2027 again, he will be the opposition. And he will be the main opposition, okay? Then Nani Atashinda Tena. Ooh, Nani Ruta Atashinda Tena. Then you'll hear him say, oh, Sijui, Ameiba Kura, Ameiba Kura. Then they shall change the constitution so she, he can become the prime minister. So these are the games that these guys play. There's no opposition. They are trying to suppress wanainchi kama mimi na wewe leo na maendugu yangu hapo katikati so that we don't start a grassroots revolutionary movement that will change the political class to pay for the crimes that they've committed since independence. That's what they've been doing. Thank you. You can maybe i'm bringing in bonifaz how, how can kenyans now overcome this evil? because if you look at uh, all these kind of handshakes it's the same thing there's a a, a constant who is Raila Odinga, and uh, uhuru is still in the play ruto is still in the play uh, it's not the first time you are hearing the name william ruto he is not appearing for the first time kenyans tried going on the street but when they go on the street it's either sponsored by Raila when they oppose the streets it's sponsored by uhuru or ruto to oppose the streets so do you think there's a way kenyans can chat their own ways like if they go for demonstration they go for a demonstration without raila or ruto or if they oppose the government they oppose that government without raila or ruto or, or uhuru uh, i think uh, personally uh... Uh, when we have uh, Raila Molodinga, who is uh, uh, the leader of the opposition in the country joining the government, then that shows that Kenyans now are uh, still pocketed. Kenyans now, they don't have the powers because you cannot just wake up and say, I want to go and uh, start Mandamano without orders from one of the top leaders who is trusted by Kenyans. So I think uh, uh, Raila Molodinga is one of the people who has been... Uh, uh, giving Kenyans a lot of hopes and guiding them, guiding Kenyans on what they can do. So I think if if uh, Raila joins the government, then it definitely we are going to have no opposition. So Kenyans will not have any powers, not unless we have uh, the likes of the young leaders who are, are, are scrutinizing and they are trying to prove that they can be the next king when it comes to this government and they can give pressures as the opposition. Uh, we have been seeing uh, uh, Baba Wino trying to prove that he can be uh, the next king. But again, I think uh, uh, if we can give uh, our uh, support to Edin Sipuna, I think Edin Sipuna is, is the guy and the senator Okia Omtata. Uh, all those are the guys who I believe that uh, they can have 60% uh, of qualities that are possessed by Raila Molodinga, that Kenyans can trust them. Whenever they, they start anything, they will follow. So I think uh, Kenyans will still suffer until to the end. I think uh, Kenyans now uh, know that they have nothing to uh, lose Bonifaz, or they you're have, saying have Kenyan, nothing to gain when they come to this government. Bonifaz, you're saying Kenyans can only go on the streets when uh, these streets are sanctioned by Raila Odinga or somebody with Raila's blessing. But uh, from the look of things, you see, I see Raila is now with William Ruto. So Kenyans should wait for Raila now to enjoy. Do you think Raila is going to, to take them to the streets? Is there no way Kenyans can go on the streets on their own and demand for what rightfully belongs to them without uh, Raila in play or somebody blessed by Raila? No, you definitely are going to be harassed by the government because uh, whenever you are, you, you are seen on the roads, you are seen uh, in this market trying to de uh, demonstrate, and they will ask you very tough questions who has given you the holders so you will uh, any kenyans who will be going to the street then definitely we saw what happened during those mandamano and, and, yes. and, and, and do, do you think raila can call them for a mandamano if it is uh, not going to serve raila's interest uh yes 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 but again we can see as one of our followers here good has said okay that you've said yes. uh, raila Morotica is going to Just a minute. you've said yes meaning uh, Raila can call a mandamano if his interest is not there. Uh, the last mandamanos that you've seen being called, I don't know what you'll take of it. Uh, when we had mandamano during the Uhuru's time, we had a handshake between uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. 
I don't want to go to that. I want to bring you what is fresh. You, you saw the mandamano that Kenyans went. People went for NADCO. Majority of the Kenyans were putting on sephorias, talking of the cost of living. That wasn't addressed in the NADCO address, in the NADCO report. Number two, for, after the NADCO, you saw one of Raila's uh, uh, sister, blood sister, has been appointed as a high commission, uh, what some people will literally call an ambassador. Uh, Raila is now being campaigned for to go to AU. Do you still believe that Raila was calling people to go for Mandamano when his interest was not in those Mandamanos? Was it? Were people going for Mandamano because of Raila's interest or people's interest? Because people's interest was the cost of living which wasn't addressed, but Raila's interest has been addressed. Are you still convinced that people go for Mandamano because of their own interest, not Raila's interest? You know, you know, you know, always uh, Raila Molodinga represents uh, uh, the common Mwanainj. You know, as I told you that uh, Raila Molodinga is the president of the people. So whatever he says, every citizen is going to obey because he, he has been addressing about the high cost of living. And we know that the high cost of living is so high. He has been addressing with the government so that they can try to uh, make this uh, country move on well by making sure that they consider the Komoni uh, Monainji, they're making sure that they uh, consider what they promised to Mama Boga. Mama Boga here is the Komoni Monainji who doesn't have any facelift. So I think uh, if William Ruto uh, now absorbed Rela uh, Molodinga, so nobody else will do that, not unless. We, uh, Raila Molodinga has endorsed someone uh, to take over this opposition. Because in every country, we always have opposition. And in opposition, it is where we get that pressure, where the government now performs. Because if they don't perform, then the opposition is calls for mandamano. And uh, the mandamano are the things that makes the government to get uh, their points deducted in how they are performing. In generally, and that is where the government now tries to push so that they can make sure they uh, do what the citizens are, uh, uh, are pushing for. So I think uh, Rela Molodinga, uh, when he has, we know that he has joined uh, the hard check. So for this government, for the, if he joins then and uh, he is supported for the EU, then definitely for the next 10 years now, the next eight years, you are going to suffer. Uh, I personally, I believe that because once I saw what happened, then I knew Kenyans don't have anything to say when it comes to this government. We are going to adhere to what they're doing. We saw what they, they did according to the housing bill. Kenyans were rejecting it, but again, towards the end, the bill was signed. So we don't have uh, anyone to represent us. You can raise your voice, but the voice just reaches uh, Androspia. You cannot even reach... a. Uh, uh, the uh, the the upper part of the atmosphere. I mean the government. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Kenya oh, Revolutionary. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I, I, I have a question. I know it is I'm you. Wait. Oh, let me answer first before you. All right. Yes. Uh, Nobody things. asked your question. So you are you responding or what are you answering? What I'm want to re re rebuttal what my friend has said there. Then I'll let you ask, ask the question very quickly. Okay. okay. Number one, Kenya. Yes. We do have an opposition. Okay, the housing bill, yes, it has passed through devious means, but we have a gentleman who was going to uh, 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 went to the courts the first time. Okay, Om Tata went to the courts. Okay, he's one person. We don't and even currently the the the, 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 B, the the act has been challenged. Yeah. I, I think I'll I'll share with you the 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 the, the, okay. the document has it, it has already been challenged. Already, already, a, a case what? has been filed. And what did they say? Uh, okay, I, I'll read it for you. Let me just no. get it. it okay, I'm to say this. The, the court decided not to give it a stay. It's a, it's a stop yeah. issue. But the, yes. he can still uh, put it to be to be repealed. On the no, I'm that. saying the forget about the okay on Tata. The recent one that the president has sent it to yes. has already been challenged to court about. by some other yeah, gentlemen. Yeah? That is what I'm talking about, Leo. Yeah. He was denied. His first motion was to put a stay on it so he doesn't end the layer. But he can still go ahead, and that's why you saw Ruto and sent goons to 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 to, to attack Nani, to attack uh, Okiomtata after he left the courts. Number two, um, 
my friend is wrong when he says that Raila Odinga is, has always fought for the common Wainchi. Raila does not care about the common Wainchi. Raila is a con man, the biggest con man in the Kenyan history. And I'll tell you why. Raila lost his 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 Nino, his uh, Say why, and I would really appreciate if okay. you okay. if you're going to interrupt me, man, just, man, man, I well just go finish watching Brazil versus England because uh, I hate no, no. when somebody is uh, I'm making a point at your say. I'm saying this. Yes. In Proceed. 2017, when Raila Odinga shook hands with Uhuru Kenyatta, that is the day that people stopped pressing and you know, supporting Raila because they realized that this guy is a scum artist. That's why he lost in 2022. He didn't get enough votes. Imam it's utter rubbish, nonsense, mlishindwa, because people did not like Uhuru Kenyatta. And they didn't like the fact that we voted for Raila Odinga, then Raila went and shook hands with the same killer that was killing us, and Al Nyanyasa. Okay? So we've known that this, after that, even the Mandamano that he was calling, he didn't have supporters. He had to call that killer, Maina Njenga, to bring Mungiki to kill people so that he can make impact, cause terrorism so that the president can sit down with him. Raila has no supporters besides Nyanza province and his psychopathic followers in Kibera. So let's stop cheating each other here. Tiraila is, is, is fighting for people. Uliona yo pichaki akipiga hapo kwa private jet. Where are his supporters? If he really cared about the, the cost of living, why can't he say that before I go to AU, to endeni mandamano ndio hii cost of living yende chini? They agreed upon everything besides that. And dio huyo amepiwachea wanaenda. So Raila is in a non-issue. He's a done deal. Ruto amemoka kwa kona kamfinya makende. Imeisha. He has no influence. Okay, so we Kenyans we can still fight through people like Okio Mtata, and if Sifuna leaves ODM, which is a terrorist organization, we can bring these people down. That's all I want to say. I just wanted to ask you a question. Do you think Raila has betrayed Uhuru Kenyatta by having a good working relationship with uh, William Ruto? No, they are friends. These people wanna make deals. These people drink together. They intermarry, they hang out in the same spot. That's why I ask you. If you really think Raila Odinga or Ruto was uh, is, is enemies with uh, Nani Uhuru Kenyatta, why is Uhuru Kenyatta still walking around Nani freely after the things that he did? To, huh? Why is he working? Nobody has, uh, no, no, nobody has filed a case. Any Kenya is at liberty to file a case. So that's what I'm him. saying. You're making my point. I'm saying if Ruto was serious, if he really hated Uhuru Kenyatta, there's plenty of evidence that this criminal killed a lot of people. Okay? So, that, that, you know, I'm here. Msidanganyo now, my politicians, they're dividing you along party lines. Mkipkiriati Raila's union is this way, he's fighting. Raila has never fought for anything. He's a con artist. Same as Urani, Uyu Kenyatta. Kenyatta is a killer, the child of a killer. So has Ruto. Thank you. Before you come in, uh, I know uh, uh, he's called Mweshimiwa or Honorable Machoka is also in here. I would just request maybe if you don't mind uh, having our videos on, uh, uh, I would really appreciate uh, Moto nae naona kunawaka, Machoka pia na joa mekuja na kombora, kombora, kombora. So, Kabla Tumpatia Machoka Nafasi Pia Naseme Neno, on the comment section, we are also having uh, people there who are also participating. And uh, I, I really like uh, the fact that they are keeping the comment section engaged. Goodyear is there. And uh, Kenya Revolutionary, you wanted to go finish watching the game between uh, England versus Brazil. It's so unfortunate. Uh, you're being told that uh, England has been beaten 1-0. Of course, we are here also to give you some updates. But if you want more analysis, we normally have a Dimba Afrik each and every uh, Saturday from 11 a.m. East African time, where we give you the spot updates, we give you predictions, and we also give you some in-depth uh, analysis of what happens uh, in the sporting world. So don't miss such kind of show. To Konapale, Kaka, Sijuni Shabiki, wa Liverpool, Sijuni Shabiki, wa Manchester, anajulikana kama Kakake, ule 
Kimanzi mwenyewe manake he shares a name with the, one of the great 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 coaches that we've been having in ah. this country he you said that support Kimanzi. Manchester no 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 I, i've not engaged you <laughs> so viewers if you're watching this for the first time ensure that you subscribe to a free 24 hour we not only give you this kind of political talks political debates but we also have some other programs that will suit your viewership so ensure you subscribe and be a member we are not asking much from you we only need your subscription that is the only way uh, you can support us we are not giving you a payable number we are not uh, making you maybe to become a paid member but you just subscribe and relax you will at least get something that can suit you once in a while uh, to watch so mzalendo if you allow me to welcome honorable machoka uh, he also uh, she has a name with some great, 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 great Kenyans. When I talk of Machoka, uh, he will tell you the person he shares the name with in his uh, opening uh, remarks. So, uh, Mr. Machoka, Karibu Sana, Afrika. Yes, good, uh, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are, guys. Nimekuwa away sana for some time. I think I've uh, been away for two weeks now, but I'm... Um, I'm trying to settle down. I moved to Nairobi and I'm trying to settle and find a good place where I can also be joining these interviews in a good way. I have been listening in the background and I'm <coughs> really, really surprised that uh, Boniface can say whatever he just said there. And I'm, I'm really shocked that he, he doesn't believe that Kenyans can stand on their own. I'm going to, uh, I'm, going to I'm trying to also uh, uh, put together things that I can say. But today I'm going to be in the side of uh, Kenya revolutionary because I think uh, it's time we call uh, a spade a spade. And uh, as much as I'm a Ruto person, anything touching the constitution, anything touching on the law, anything touching on uh, constitutionality should never and can never be touched. And I will never allow that to happen. And I personally, I've never wanted to, to believe that there is somebody who is bigger than us, the supreme people who give them the power to do whatever they do up there so whatever the shenanigans these people are trying to play uh, and we kenyans are, are just I, I think the only people who are, who are scared are those people who support raila blindly because those are the people who wait for raila to give them an alarm we thought uhuru a lesson we who supported him in 2017 we taught him a lesson uh, we voted for you twice but you are not going to take us the way you want those are the people those are the kind of people that we want in this kenya but those people who want Raila to always a big film being the to talk, those kind of people you cannot allow them in this country. That's why I'm saying that as a person who, who uh, as a growing and a young man who is growing and has a very very let me let me say a bright future, I'm not going to sit here and be and believe that we don't have power as a people. I'm not going to sit here and believe that the constitution is just too weak to speak for itself. So these shenanigans of these uh, politicians believing that they can just change the constitution the way they want is not going to happen. And, and if you think that we Kenyans are so weak, let them try and bring it on. We, we, we thought we were that lesson and we are going to teach anybody who is trying to do that a lesson. Even if now, every time around they want to, they, 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 they team up Uhuru, Ruto and, and, and Raila. Changing this constitution that we were given in 2010 is not going to happen. And, I, and I'm promising you that I, Mimi na Kenya Revolution I totally dio maandamano yenye nyimu naogopa. And that's why I want to say and I want to be so so clear to you right now that uh, as much as we support our political parties let's also uh, be the people. Acha pia si tukue na utu. Ukiona kitu mbaya just say is bad. Don't just say something because you are a Raila person or you are a Ruto person. Don't just support to be so so uh, so 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 much into someone until you can't see mistakes i personally support ruto but i am not blind because i have my eyes i want to be president of kenya one day if you want to be president of this country you have to see the mistakes so that when you get into presidency you don't do that's one thing i want to say if if the president uh, the current president who himself taught us that uhuru kenyatta was mutilating the constitution let me use the word that uh, uh, kenya revolutionary used Uhuru Kenyatta was mutilating the constitution uh, in 2021 uh, and 2019, 2021, EO, BBI stuff. William Ruto was the person who was leading at the forefront. 
in defending the constitution and i believe that william ruto should keep his word and we must remind him every day that you are the person who disagreed with Uhuru in matter of constitution and you say that you will not allow anybody to change the constitution i personally will feel bad if mr president goes against his own words and i will feel so bad that uh, he is going to let this constitution that was fought for and he himself noted the problems in 2010 and said that this constitution is not as good as you guys think and i personally believe because i i also listen to my church leaders who, who are speaking about the constitution a lot they told us that this constitution is not as good as it looks and and, and Raila Odinga has a record of conning people i'm not i'm, I'm not going to, i'm not going to spare in words here Raila Odinga has a, a tendency of conning people or after every election he makes sure that there is something that he will negotiate at the background at the expense of people's lives at the expense of uh, pe uh, uh, pro people's properties to make sure that his interests and his family's interests are cared for we've never had another politician like Raila that's why i wish that this guy disappears from Kenya so that we can have another generation of politicians because the likes of uh, Edwin Sifuna that the uh, Kenya Revolution has mentioned here are very, very great leaders that we as Kenyans expect that they take over from Raila and do uh, are now a constitutional opposition. You know, Raila has never been constitutional in his position. That's why I usually feel like we've never had opposition in Kenya. We've, we've had a cartel in, in opposition because Raila Odinga makes sure that after election, he looks for a way of complaining that he lost an election, and after losing an election, he plans, he looks for an excuse of uh, taking people to the streets, and, and in that uh, streets, they just speak those things that they want Kenyans to hear, so that they can come out and 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 and, 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 and uh, protest, and and also uh, to a government that well, I have numbers behind me, and if you play with us, we are going to do this. If you are not going to sit with me in a meeting and, and we agree on what I want not what Kenyans want, we are going to burn this country. That's Raila that you have. I can tell you when, 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 I, was, uh, when I was growing uh, in 2007, uh, I was for Raila Odinga at that time because I felt like there are things that Kibaki was also doing that weren't right, but I was young and maybe I misjudged him. But there's a way that uh, they, they explained to us about the, the, the referendum, uh, that uh, report that was made uh, to change the constitution that was being passed all over the country that they were opposing. There's an argument that William Ruto made that made me realize that if this guy is going to stand for president one day, I'm going to vote for him. Because that time he made a lot of sense and, and I stood by that. And 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 of course, uh, you know what happened in 2005, the, referen the referendum collapsed. So in 2010, when Raila Odinga, who was with William Ruto campaigning and telling people that the constitution that Kibaki wanted to bring was bad, after his interests was catered for, and we've had William Ruto in the past saying that uh, the seat of prime minister that was supposed to be his was taken by Raila, who was who is also, and I'm also trying to explain the tendency of him calling people who shortchanged Ruto and made sure that Ruto will go and suffer somewhere in the Hague so that he never becomes a threat in the future. That is the deal that was being negotiated uh, be, between Kofi Annan and other people. There is no other deal that was being negotiated. Those uh, those talks that you you saw, th those were for Honorable the Honorable Vincent, uh, before you came, we read uh, the National Accord and the National Accord. Uh, I I had uh, I the, had that. Is, is the one who created the the position of the prime minister and it is defined there clearly. Can you just read it so that you don't miss? Yes, uh, yes, I know. And tell I know. us where I'm, the National Accord was saying that that position was for William Ruto. Just read I it. I agree. As a matter of I agree. We don't want to I want to agree people. with you. First of all, first of all, I'm not disagreeing with whatever you guys read. I was listening. And that's why I'm trying to say that these people are con men. Yeah, you, con draw people. Uh, you know, it's so misleading. You know, listen, I'm trying to explain why, because, you know, I, I say that the things that you guys read were the, for the people and for the press, but the things that were being uh, discussed in the offices and in the hotels at night were the things that happened. Because if you want to tell us that the Kenyans were so angry that they got out to strike, and when Raila said that let's stop the mass action so that we can allow the talks, and the people just all of a sudden stopped, that's telling us that we Kenyans are fools, that we are, we are remote controls. No, no. Because uh, you tell me why the people stopped to, uh, going to Mandamano last year, uh, uh, because Raila just agreed to, to meet William Ruto in Mombasa. That's how uh, Raila Odinga supporters behave. 
that's how they have been behaving since ages. They are not changing. Even their children's children are, are the same. They are not changing. They Somebody are the same. Somebody is saying this, so, eh? that for those people who maybe follow specific religion, if you are a religious leader comes today and say you start fasting, you will go fasting. If today uh, uh, Jesus tells you that uh, they've forgiven Satan, you stop uh, blaming Satan for everything and that kind of thing, then people will have to change. You know, when you are in, in, in power, you have to be followed. And one of the, uh, the things that show that you are powerful and you're in control is when people follow, follow you without questioning. That is when you wield power. But if you're a leader who people can't listen to, then you're not a leader. A leader is to give direction and is to be followed. The leader doesn't follow people. Then I cannot be part of that. Personally, I've followed William Ruto for years. And the reason why I've followed him is because uh, there, are, there are so many issues that I agree with him. But there are a lot of things that I also agree with him. I disagree with him, especially these are an issue that the Kenyan revolution has said here. If I were William Ruto today, of, of course, I know constitutionally, William Ruto is not supposed to uh, arrest anybody. He does not his job, and I, uh, maybe that one is a correction that I will make to Kenya Revolution. But as William Ruto, I could have established a very, very serious investigative uh, team to return back the two billion that Uhuru was losing every day, to make sure that the likes of Matiangi, who stashed a lot of billions out of the country, are returning the money back. I will. I, that that's one of the things that I disagree but, but with. First, right hold, now. Just hold on there. Then they'll come back to you. Uh, your time. You know, we, we want to ensure that everybody gets an equal time. Just hold on there. They'll come back to you. I'll give it to Mzalendo, who is now going to also direct us and the time give us a timekeeping. And uh, of course, uh, after Mzalendo, I know Mzalendo will go to Bonfast. Then Mzalendo will then go to Kenya Revolutionary. Uh, of which you are responding to and just to help in a revolution or to give him a hint the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces so arrest is done by a branch or an arm of the armed forces so uh, i think uh, he may be a kenya revolutionary siri kidogo so he will build on that to respond to you so mzalendo you can take it over It seems um, Zalendo Kama Hapatikani, then uh, with the acceptance of Boniface, I'll get to Kenya Revolutionary. You've been mentioned, though you've not been mentioned completely, give, but I'll give, give you Boniface. an advantage. It was Boniface's time. Let him talk first, and I'll... I'll, I'll... No, he, 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 he he's the one who is telling me to allow you talk. Oh, me? He, okay. he, he, yeah, he is the one who is telling me to allow you talk, then he will go next. That okay. is what we Brotherhood is. Eh? Yeah. He you, you wants you to address, Boniface is saying that it's not the role of William Ruto to arrest people. So why do you have to blame oh, oh, Ruto oh. for not arresting uh, Uru Kenyatta? Okay, yes. Um, it's not his role. He cannot arrest him directly. But again, you can start a commission to look into the past corrupt deals that has happened in the past regimes. Whether it's uh, uh, Uru regime, uh, Kibaki regime, Moi, and you can go back to that. Uh, we were talking about Krigler report, and there was Lungu report too about land. Uh, we can follow up on that and see who actually owns who, what, and how people got their lands. You can get them in so many ways. So what I'm trying to say, well, well, the point I was trying to make is this. Ruto, Ruto is in a position where if he really wanted to uh, fix uh, or prosecute indirectly Kenyatta, he can do that. Okay, that's the point I was making. Uh, the second point, uh, Leo, when you're saying that if you're a leader, people should be listening to you. I don't know. Jesus should forget Satan. Leo, I don't know what you're drinking, but I'll forgive you because I see you have covered your hair like a madman. So today I'll just leave you. <laughs> I have to pick on you, Leo. I, I, I like you. That's why I do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I was trying to say is this. Leo, even as a follower, you have to also think for yourself. You know, uh, when... When a leader tells you kunyue ni sumu, utakunyua, just because you're a follower, you know, you, you, you have to... Uh, Kenya Revolutionary, yeah. I, I understand you. I'm not interrupting you. I'm not opposing you. Huh? I, I okay. want to tell you a story. A story is told of somebody called Melchior Ondeto, the founder of Legio Maria. 
I know this story relates well with you. This Melkion Deto took some Lejo Marian to a certain river in my constituency next to my village called Rivandoya. In English, it's called Rivandoya. And told them that they can fly to heaven. People started flying and at least there are some people who died. Something that made the government or the authority to arrest Melkion Deto and detained him in my village a police post that is built in my grandfather's land called Ukwala Police Post. And up to date, 26 December, the Legio Maria fellows across the world comes there for some demonstrations. You are a member of Legio Maria. You can explain that one. Better. I'm not a member of Legio Maria. Stop it. But that's a good swipe. <laughs> Leo, anyway, uh, Leo, uh, I don't know what happened with Legio Maria, but the point I'm trying to make is this. Uh, we are human beings we are thinking human beings you know you can i i would expect people to discern or uh think for themselves if if your leader is saying something that's unreasonable quest, even the bible says question test this spirit see which one is is, is is reasonable you know you have to test god see what is is, is is he about is he real so when if you see this man every time we are having a handshake, since we are talking about handshakes, every election is having a handshake, then anawacha komata. If you keep on following him, then, uh, and you uwacha komata, we shall not feel sorry for you. There's, you have to think for yourself. That's all I'm, that's, that's the point I was trying to make. Thank you. Trevor Vincent, before you take your, oh, sorry. I'll, I know, uh, Kimanzi can wait. I, I know I know him. He's a gentleman. So Vincent, before maybe you drink that cup of water, you are speaking of something that you did not finish. So it will be unfair to allow you to go then come back. I, I, it will interfere with the, your flow of thought. So if you can proceed, uh, I think that will be in order if you are comfortable doing that at this moment. Eh? Okay. I, I, I wasn't going to leave. I... I will just uh, go not uh, be here and be listening so that as I finish uh, taking a meal, I, I'll come back. But anyway, let me say the following. Um, the reports that you were reading here before, and I, I listened to them, all of them, I was in the background, I was preparing my my, my, my dinner. I listened to all of them, and I, 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 I understand that we all, we all are, know how politicians play their game. I am a politician myself. I know uh, there has been a lot of heat here in Kisi for the past uh, one and a half months. And that politics has been uh, uh, putting me away also because I had some things I was, also supposed, I was also working on and I had to also be in Nairobi so that I can also work on some things. But these reports that these politicians make, these, these reports are mere uh, 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 mere uh, papers that are supposed to keep those people you are calling followers busy. I personally am not a follower of anyone. I support and I support objectively what William Bruto does. And I disagree objectively because from that man I've learned a lot. But from him also there are things that I feel like if I was William Bruto today I could have done much, much better than him because there are things I feel like you don't have to do them. But because of politics and because you want to make some people happy, you have to sacrifice the genuineness that you are. Like, I know William Ruto is genuine from his heart that I want to do some things. But the moment William Ruto tried to do something that goes against the agreement that Raila made with him, Raila Odinga is never ashamed of telling his followers that uh, you know, that's why sometimes I wonder what these followers are, and I wonder what these guys are given. Because if William Ruto decides today that me Naruka ideal, no, I'm me Naruka ideal. You jinga ya ku salimiana salimiana. I'm going to I'm going to 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 kuruka Raila. Raila Odinga is never ashamed because he knows his supporters are are like cows. They they, they just uh, they they just take directions from him directly. And our Ambia to the left, they don't even ask what is on the left side. They just follow. That's why I feel like if, Re if Re Ruto decides today that he wants to do the right thing, Raila Odinga will ban this country to the, uh, today because we can't even arrest him because you know his supporters. 
the supporters have been meant and have been twisted to believe that Raila is untouchable. No, no. That's why I want, I, I, I ask God that this, posi this position of AU comes as soon as possible, so that this guy just goes. We want another uh, regime of politicians. We want us, the young men and, and young women, to lead this country and, and to tell people the truth. We want the president to have a working environment that is constitutional. You know, he's forced to do unconstitutional things because the politicians that are supposed to be observing and, 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 and object, objectively opposing him are pushing him to make the mistakes that he's making. Of course, he's, they are not pushing him to, to, uh, to pass the housing uh, agenda, but I'm meant to understand that even this housing agenda, these politicians are negotiating to be given contracts. They are not uh, objectively opposing it because it's bad. It's because they are not part of the beneficiaries of the, of the uh, taxpayers' money, you see? So even these people that call themselves so genuine that they go on TV and, and insult other politicians, those people, they just do that for the media. But when they are with Raila, they, they coil their, their tails. I can tell you, Sifuna is a very, very uh, eloquent and very, very energetic young man. By the moment Raila coughs, you saw him with Gachagua the other day. So he's also one of those puppets that I I, 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 I can't even allow to take over from Raila because those people don't have the balls to stand up to Raila Odinga. In, in Rift Valley, you've seen some, some guys are standing up to Ruto and that's the kind of things that I expect people to do to Raila, but the people fear him like he's some god. And, and that's why we've been making mistakes now and again. We will continue trying to, to, to change the constitution that he himself, Raila Odinga, proposed to the people and told the people that this constitution will sort all our problems. But right now he's busy telling us that BBI, BBI will change. An article will sort out the problems. The problems will not be problems because Raila is the, is, is the loser or because they are affecting Raila Odinga. The problems and, and the constitutional reform will only come as the Kenya Revolution has said, the constitutional reforms will only come from us, the people, not the politicians. Not even a member of parliament can propose something and I agree with that because those politicians all are for hire, what they work for hire. Uh, Ruto, you saw what Uhuru did. Uhuru and, and, and Raila, after uh, while he realized that this thing is going to be declared unconstitutional, they looked for Junet Mohammed and they put him as, a, as, as the people who, the proponents of BBI. That's how the politicians behave. So, okay, I, I know even Kenyans. If William Ruto decided, or Raila Odinga decided to use one Kenyan to propose constitutional reforms and, 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 and start the process, Raila Odinga can hire someone because we Kenyans also are very, very foolish. We, we only do things that politicians want us to do. We, we don't do things that, uh, that uh, our minds want us to do. We cannot, even, we cannot even oppose a bill projectively. We can't even oppose a bill because we know this bill is bad. In fact, you might find that the housing bill is not bad. But because the Raila has not said it's good, we all think it's bad. And because it's Ruto who is proposing it, we all think it's bad, you know? Maybe, uh, I know even uh, the issue of Haiti is one issue that I, I really want to talk about. But maybe even the issue of Haiti should not be something uh, problematic. But because Raila Odinga is silent, now William Ruto will move ahead with it because there's nobody who's going to speak on behalf of us. You see? So I think we Kenyans are like, uh, uh, of course, our democracy has developed and we have improved more than other countries in Africa. But we still have a long way to go as a people. The only thing that I wish that we as people do is make sure that we strengthen those institutions that we believe that are a bit fair. But I believe that there are those institutions that we can improve on, especially the judiciary. The judiciary, we can improve on their uh, uh, freedom of uh, uh, doing things. We can improve on the, you know, how the ESCC operates. We can improve China, DCI, DCI, those guys are criminals. I don't, I don't know if they look for me, but I believe that the DCI, those people are criminals and they have demonstrated to us in the past that the operations are called from state house. But the ESCC also, uh, with the, the, these uh, independent uh, uh, organizations, the IBC, we can improve on IBC. IBC has demonstrated to us that it can be independent. We can improve on IBC. We can improve on ESCC. But the parliament, the moment we, we we vote based on who gives you how much money, we're not going to change anything in legislation. We are going to remain in that problem forever, not only in Kenya, but America. 
the problem of legislation will always be uh, the majority party will always have their way and the minority will always have their say and that's what we our people as, as the people uh, legislated to our constitution blindly even when william bruto and other people are telling us in 2010 that these this constitution that you guys are passing is going to kill you and and i'm happy that the, the person who are who was at the front line proposing it lost in the same same election that he was he wanted to make a constitution that will crucify william ruto a constitution that could crucify uhuru kenyatta and, and his team but in real sense the constitution turned against him that's how a law is when you make a law make sure you look at the forward and the backward when i say manga sheria ni msumeno ukiunda sheria ikate mwingine hata wewe kuna siku itakufikia so i think uh, Raila Odinga made that mistake and he will live to regret it and he will live to regret why he proposed that constitution he, he can't show you but he's seriously regretting why did i propose this constitution why do i do, why do i have to be the uh, uh, the loser in, in everything that i propose is because he i believe if you are educated and if you are smart and if you went to school you can do your mathematics you can calculate and know that if I keep on uh, making my followers happy. If I keep on doing things in the same way all the time, and my 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 results are always the same all the time, I'm not gonna change anything. I think Raila should now uh, leave this team that he is with and and try to focus on his life. Maybe retire from politics, allow other people to also emerge and make the same mistakes that he's made, so that they can also learn. Because William Ruto has learned from the past mistakes. I'm sure if he's doing some mistakes right now, he is also not doing it at goodwill. And I know if I were William Ruto today, I could try to do things differently. I hope he'll, he'll do things differently going forward, which is not easy to do when you have supporters of Raila Odinga. Because if if the Nadiko report could uh, collapse at some point. Uh, Raila Odinga will tell his supporters that uh, Ali Turuka on, and the people will believe him and utaona watu wa Jakaranda wa Merudi huko and we will go back to tear gassing people so I believe going forward going forward and I want to say this as my last remark as I go to eat and I want to uh, take the shortest time so that I can join you again I want to say that if we were to interpret the constitution as it is we were to interpret the constitution as it is let's understand chapter one of the constitution where we the people are given the absolute power to call the shots but we don't know how to call them we only think that you have to go to the streets to call the shots no there's no that's not the only way there are a lot of ways that are stipulated in the constitution the same thing you are doing in this uh, forum this is what our constitution allows us in chapter one and and in the uh, that's how we are going to uh, try and educate our people that's how we are going to put people behind us that's how we are going to uh, pull masses behind us so that we can be at the front line in leading a revolution a revolution we can lead is by electing out those quacks in parliament uh, making sure that those mcs in county assemblies that we put but they, i have a problem with the county assemblies because there is no county that uh, elects uh, MCAs that are educated, that are, uh, they are, uh, I think 40% of the MCAs went to school and finished from four and even went to campus. The rest are just uh, uh, those popular uh, Boda Boda guys that uh, were chairman of a uh, favorite governor in your area, the people who are elected MCAs. Some uh, elected good leaders, but majority of the MCAs are very, very uh, shallow in my in thinking. That's why you, you, M uh, governors will eat money and, and, and no MCA will do anything. You see, you saw what happened to Kisi County the other week. Eh? There they, they are silly things that were being moved around and the case went as it went. And right now we don't have a, a deputy governor because of such kind of things. So I think there are a lot of things that we can address in the constitution and we can only use chapter one to do that. And that's the only way we can do it. But if a politician wants to tell us that he can lead a, a, a revolution, I'm not going to buy that because uh, a politician will only leave, uh, take people to the streets to fight for his own interests. I thank you, and I'll, I'll, I'll be back in a few minutes. Zalendo. Yeah. Hey, how are you, man? Yeah, long time. Next. A long time. I, I was I was just wondering, uh, have Chelsea moved on top of the table or 
they're still sitting on number 10. Who? So where, 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 where are you watching Chelsea Mzalendo? Oh, okay. Why are you following? Black is also no, here. Black you, is long you, time. You know, you, you know, we've not they seen got Black, that, huh? The gut, the gut that Kenya revolutionary comes within on on the stage. You'd think that there is an Arsenal fan who is sitting on top of the table. Uh, Arsenal, not Arsenal sitting on top of the table. Arsenal win. is waiting for the crowning. Hmm? <laughs> Saka is injured, so your story is over. But let's go back to. Uh, forget about Saka getting injured. <laughs> Chelsea. The only thing you can do ni ku, kufunga nyuele. So can we continue? No, Black, Leo, Black Leo, is... Leo, do you know that you you have uh, Bayern Munich in Alliance Arena? You have Thomas Muller and Agnesa Ginabri. I just uh -huh. want to take this opportunity to also welcome Wale Wakopale. I can see Pen Nyagaka. Pen Nyagaka is there. Pen Karibu Sana. We really want you to join the studio. Long time Black. I think the last time I saw Black having some active debate, it's really been long. It's God is back. And today he's speaking a different language. Black is saying that going to Haiti shouldn't be kenyan duty so i'll share uh the studio yeah. link on the comment section so that uh, people can join people can join we are here uh, till morning we are here till morning so we are having a special this is a special can, show, I, actually. can i can i ask can i ask mzalendo and and my friend who i know he took a break how do they feel about ruto sending the police forces to haiti Even yeah uh, i mean yeah, I mean, uh, first, first and foremost, uh, I know so many Kenyans are against uh, police force going to Haiti. I am not against it. I am pro it completely because uh, what is happening? Need uh, uh, need need food. Those uh, gangsters are stopping uh, food from reaching the families, and they are jacking the food and. Uh, and asking for you know a payment of that uh, the same food uh, that they are getting for free so you it depends on how you look at it if you look at it in a humanitarian angle then uh, you'll be on my side but if you look at it in a selfish uh, angle then you'll be thinking like uh, you know uh, you don't care about any uh, about your neighbor it is just just the same way uh, we went into into Somalia when the whole world was defeated with Soma when Americans were defeated with Somalia. Today, uh, Somalia has a transitional government. So why why are you so afraid of Kenyan police force going to Haiti? After all, it's not the hundred the the one thousand force only going to Haiti. They are leading a delegation of other of the other troops to Haiti. And these are not your regular police going to Haiti. I will see those police you see with an AK-47 walking in the streets and arresting people. No, these are the racist squad are trained in Russia and trained in the U.S. They are, they are, they are trained in combat and they are trained in rescue. So they are going to rescue the people uh the, the people of, 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 of Haiti. there's nothing wrong with that absolutely so so even even if it violates our laws that's still okay we are going to violate the law as long as we send people to Haiti. our laws does not no if, if 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 there is a law violation in it then i think that is being addressed in parliament that should be addressed in parliament there is nothing no, it, uh, it, it, it's, the parliament does not address any disputation by the law they it's the courts this is not this is not this is not the first time kenya is taking peacekeeping forces to other countries it is not it is not that and is true been... that, that is correct but it was illegal even when we sent police forces in kosovo in, in the 1990s it was illegal i i believe there is always a way around it just like uh like uh uh like the housing uh, levy that is always <laughs> somehow they can always amend amend the laws to enable uh, the president uh, or the country gets its way to sending uh, troops to Haiti. There's nothing difficult about it. Yes, it can go to court. Uh, the court will say uh, the court will give you recommendation what needs to be done, and that's why we have the courts. The courts will dismiss it, but give you, hey, Mr. President. Uh, you need public participation in this. You need uh, to amend this law uh, so that uh, the troops can go to Haiti. And and remember, we have the the UDA as the majority in both houses. 
So there's nothing difficult in that. It's just like we're playing musical chairs. But at the end of the day, uh, the government will get its way. All right. I hope I... Hey, Black, I saw somebody like Black here. Hey, Mr. Black, how are you, man? Black. Our moderator has disappeared, or what am I seeing? Everybody has disappeared on the screen. Kenya Revolutionary, are you still there? Black. Black, are you still there? I hope I answered some of your questions. Uh, what am I end up? This is uh, Amekimbia. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what what is going on with our moderator on the backstage. He's running up and down. Uh, but uh, I have Black here. But uh, Le Black Black has Black. On your <laughs> Black Black, can you hear me? What's going on? Kenya Revolutionary, can you hear me? Really? Hello? I think we have a technical itch, but uh, we'll be back shortly. I don't know what's happening here. Somebody is adding and removing people on stage. Who is this? A penny. Penny Nyagaka, can you say something? Hello. Hey guys, sorry, 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 what has happened? Eh? I think almost everybody has uh, rain and... Uh... Oh. Everyone has rain and left me behind. Let, let, let me share the link. These are some uh, technical hinge that happened. Let me just share the link. Jeffrey, to which law comes first when lives are being lost? Jeffrey, you need to join the studio and tell us why you are against uh, Kenya sending some police force to Haiti, though the court uh, declared it uh, illegal. Though the court declared it illegal, you need to get back and tell us. So. I've shared the link for the guys who maybe missed that link. I think you can use the link to, to join. Meanwhile, we are also sorry for what happened uh, in Russia. That is the terror attack. I'll just play for you the video so that you can be able to see. We're still someone. on this breaking news out of Russia. That is the Crocus Hall, the music hall that is currently on fire. Russian media, the TASS organization, is reporting that the roof of this is partially collapsing as we speak. What we know is that it appears three gunmen, Russians are calling them terrorists, entered this concert hall, shooting on their way in and inside the hall, killing multiple people. At least 40 people are dead, 100 are injured. That number is likely to go up. It is a massive emergency scene around this concert hall, as you can see by the sheer number of uh, blinking lights out there, a number of ambulances. The Russians have said that their number one task right now 
is to make sure that they get more survivors. Uh, joining the conversation is founding partner and Washington correspondent at Puck News, Julia Ioffe, um, also one of our uh, favorite Russia guests, knows a lot about the country. Julia, the... Um, the spokesperson for Ukraine's military and intelligence agency called the shooting a deliberate provocation of the Putin regime, which the international community has warned about. What do you make of that coming from the Ukrainians? Well, there's a lot of blame going around right now when we know the least about who is behind this. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who you remember used to be the president of Russia, he was a kind of liberal darling who led Russia through the reset under President Obama, has just come out and said that, you know, if Ukraine is behind this, then they deserve a massive retaliation. He said, a death for a death. Uh, people are pointing fingers all over the place, but we don't know a lot. We've also seen the Ukrainian government come out and say that they have nothing to do with this. Um, the White House has echoed this and said they haven't seen any evidence suggesting that uh, the government in Kiev has any connection to this attack. But uh, Maria Zakharova, who is the spokeswoman for the Russian foreign ministry, has shot back and said, you don't know anything. It could be the Ukrainians. And I also see a lot of um, friends and people uh, I follow on social media in Russian talking about how this might be, in fact, a provocation by the Russian security services. Ambassador McFall mentioned that the 1999 terrorist attacks on residential buildings in Moscow where hundreds of people were killed in their sleep when the, these residential buildings exploded in the middle of the night, that that was how Putin came to power. And it has been a longstanding theory that Putin and the FSB were actually behind those attacks and that he used them to crack down and, and seize power. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe that theory, of course, until Putin didn't go into Ukraine two years ago. So, of course, a lot of people are now deeply suspicious, people who don't approve of the uh, Putin government or what he's doing are now deeply suspicious and think that this might be yet another, um, whether the Russian government is behind this or not, that this might be used as a pretext to close the borders, call up a massive mobilization of the country, which uh, Putin has been loath to do at this point, and to crack down on any remaining freedoms. Yeah, again, we don't know who's behind I this, um, and that I appreciate the, uh, the insight into what people are speculating about. Um, I wonder, though, when you're talking about how the Russian government might use this, uh, this tragedy to their advantage, do you, I mean, when we've seen incidents in the past that have happened within Russia, um, Vladimir Putin has, has gone harder on Ukraine, used it to strike harder on Ukraine. Might that happen, Julia? That absolutely might happen, which is... Okay, guys, that is just to remind you of what happened uh, uh, in... Uh, Russia, it's really sad uh, that uh, the acts of terrorism are still experienced in the world in this kind of century when people are believed to, sh to, to should have been more civilized. So we really condemn with the strongest uh, terms or strongest words possible uh, what happened. And uh, we, we, we need to join hands as, a, as the the entire world community and ensure that uh, we strongly oppose and fight against uh, terrorist terrorism because uh, these terrorist activities uh, have really led to loss of lives loss of properties and have really destroyed countries even here in africa uh, we have uh, countries like uh, somalia that have really uh, been under terror attack uh, for the last 30 years eh? so back to the country. I know uh, there are some technical issues and uh, some of our moderators or the panelists could not be able to uh, have uh, a control of the studio. I'm really sorry and apologize for that. So if you so wish to join the studio, I think I've shared the link. Uh, you can use this. Now everything is in control. I can be able to control it. Uh, Mr. Black, uh, welcome. Join the studio. Uh, we'll get back a uh, good year. Just welcome. Okay. You know, such kind of things happen, but yeah, I, I'm glad I'm back in control and I'm back in position. Maybe if I just have to go through some of the comments that you people are left, Geoffrey Ruto said that uh, Raila is headed to the AU, but his fellow old man is in the village full of depressions. I don't know which 
uh, a kind of man Geoffrey Ruto is talking of. These politicians are wicked and we should not follow them blindly. But that's what happens in Africa, people follow politicians. It's not uh, politicians who follow people, but people follow politicians, uh, whether blindly or not blindly, any instruction that I give. So there's something that is happening in the Western part of this country. There's a war between uh, uh, the National Assembly Speaker, that is uh, uh, Moses Masika uh, Wetangula, and uh, one, the governor of Franzoia, uh, that is uh, Natembea. So I don't know what is happening there. I'll just play a short video, then we'll be able to weigh on it. I'll play a short video and we'll be able to weigh on it. Go spend your poverty transoya is shinwe. Mamba ya kwambia, kwambia sisi, and blessed are the poor, for they shall see the kingdom of God. Sisi yo tumekata. We have refused. Tumesema, tunataka kuona ufalme wa mbinguni, lakini ufalme ya dunia, lakini matuyone pia. You can't suffer for 90 years hapa, wakati unakufa hata unangu. Amura na kwambia, divumili wa mbinguni. Hakuna, na bishop mwenye naongea la hapi ya tepua, hako na gari ya naendesha Mercedes Benz. So mamba ya glorify popa, tumefaa nini? Andiboza mini kiongea hithi, kuna viongozi wengine sasa walali. Wanafikira tunatambiataka kuja kuchukua uongozi yao. Mimi na focus kwa watu ya transoi. Lakini mtu akileta mdomo mingi transoi ya pia zutaenda huko kwa. Wama na mna gani? Kuna wengine wamesahau mungu huko bungoma. Wako na, ati wako na yezu huko. Eh? <laughs> ati wako na yezu bwana, wako na yezu ya tongareni huko. Ati pia wako na popu. Ati wako na papa ya Roma huko. Ah watu wanapata, wanafanya watu waluya, tunakuwa watu ya brand of jokes everywhere. Ata ukenda mimi ya Nairobi kule, wakizia natoka weza ndia bari ya, ya Yesu ya Tongarini. We just become like all jokers. And they are happy kufanya hizo vitu hao ndio viongoza ambao tuko nao. Viongoza ambao maisha yao yote haja wai kusacrifice anything for anybody. Viongoza ambao wanatueja ni wambia watu wetu, hii freedom ambaye watu wanaona watu wanaongea hivi. Kuna mtu ambaye alisimama akambia moi. Moi was larger than life. Moi alikuwa kila mahali. Moi alikuwa meka intelligence bako manyumba za watu. Unaishi na bibi kumba anafanya na intelligence. Unaongea tu manana na bibi, ikifika zubu ya zikari wamekufikia. Ala mama nakuambia wendujua muzata hiyo kuta hiko na mazikio. Na kume mazikio ni yeye. Lakini kuna watu waliambia muze moye na vize na we want our freedom na kuma tuonge. Sindio? Sasa yeah. atumimi ni kizema papa ya Roma mengiza watu yetu kwa, kwa mutambo kwa umasikini. Iko watu wanakweja waniambia kwa mba nizionge. Yeah. Wele hawa jama kama wakekua kina muliro wakati uo. Sisi tukepanda, tukepanda independence kweli. Awa jamaa wangeambia mzungu waende kweli? Awa kena chikati yoke kuwa na pigwa gibawa na mzungu alafa naambia mzungu yoke giboko yiko sawa sawa ungeza ingini. Yani unaogopa mtu paka unatetemeka tu? Sisi tumesema mamba ya ugandamiza watu wetu ili wa worship na tembe yoke mekwisha. Nataka mkue na pesa. Ato kitembea hapa town ukikanyaka mao nyanya ya mtu muna malizania hapo. Awa mama wanyanya munaona wana, wana, wana imba hapa. Enda kanyaka nyanya yake hapa zaita au nuone. Mutafikisha na kwa polisi. Sisi ya utake ya ibu. Ndiyo munaona hii mamba ni ya kweka pesa kwa mifuko. Sitaki kijana wewe. Uko na bibi. Hako na mzibo. Unaona mama. Mamba inaendelea tu inakuwa kubwa. Inakuwa kubwa. Inakuwa kubwa. Wakati mama nakuambia sasa mamba meharibika usiku. Unaza kupigia na atambia zimu. Wadi mama sasa mamba mamba mekua mbae. Tafuta gari ya kupeleka hospital. Ama mama anenda kujifungua. Kutoka hospital unasema una pesa, una bill. 
ya kulipia mama amekuzalia mtoto mtoto mwenye huyo mwenye umezalisha Unataka wanaume wengine wakuchangie mtoe mama kule ni kama uchangie kuweka mtoto huko. Aibu. Aibu ya umaskini ndio hiyo. Aibu ya hakuna aibu ya umaskini ambaye anashinda hiyo. Kutangazia dunia mzima kwa mama amejifungua na huwezi kumleta nyumbani. Hiyo ndio aibu mimi nataka kuondoa tuanzoe. Na watu wangu hii maneno inatisha watu. Kuna watu ambao wanaamini kwamba uongozi yao lazima ashikwe na mtu atanaleta hapa anasema huyu akuwe governor na anasema basi ndio hiyo. Wana ambao wanaamini hiyo hawataki mambo ya kufanyia wananchi kazi. Hii maneno yanawatisha sana. Mimi ni generali niko mbele. Nyinyi ni soldiers. Nikiangalia nyuma mtakuwa ama mtakuwa. Si mtakuwa. Hii mambo hii mali imefikia ni kama ile ndege iko runway karibu na ina take off. Uwezi kuisimamisha. It either takes off it crashes. We are not ready to crash. Tumelewana? Watoto tumelewana? Na nyenye wacha ni wambie. Kuna watu ambao wanasifanya kwa ambao ni wanaongoza western huku. Western region yiko na mabunge karibu 45. Body Kenya yiko na bunge 5. ANC yiko na mabunge gapi? 5. Hao wengine hao kwa jamaa gani? Watu wako kwa UDA, wako kwa Jubilee, wako kwa DAP, wako kwa Independent, wao wanaongoza nini? Ukienda Nyanza ujumbe wote wako kwa ODM. Ukienda kule Mount Kenya wote wako kwa UDA. Na kuna mtu ambaye anaongoza. Hii yetu inaongozwa na nani? Yetu hii naongozwa kwa nanani ili siku tukisema watu ya Western na Western ni jamii zote za Kenya. Tunaenda kwa meza. Nani anatupeleka kwa hiyo meza? Saa hizi nani anatupeleka kwa hiyo meza? Wale viongozi ambao wanajifanya kwamba wao ni wanaongoza sisi. Speaker hapo tuna kura moja ambayo ni muhimu. Ile imewekwa kwa kit only one vote. Inaitwa vote ya the president of Kenya ndiye amemweka. Leo hii akiamuka aseme I've got change of mind I want a different speaker kama housing levy ya mako home Yenye kweli mataka kuongozwa na pilot ya aina hiyo Na watu wetu viongozi wanafuatanga wananchi mali wananchi wanataka kwenda viongozi wanaendanga huko Lakini sisi wetu mnataka kwenda wapi Mnajuanga kweli? Lazima provide direction na mkatae ushenzi ya watu. Unaona tu mwana anakupeleka tu kwa shimo na unaenda tu. Ulikuwa mole, ohani lo liberano. Sasa sisi hapo ndio tupo. Na nyinyi mnajua wakati Tanzania inasambaratika na uongozi, the entire western region inasambaratika na uongozi. Watu wanapotea tu wengine wanaenda huko wengine wanaenda huko. Mtu asikudanganye wengine kwa nyumba ya mtu. Maana wakati wanagawana mali wanaulizanga hii nyumba imeleta nini? Wewe mara huko kwa hii, mara huko kwa hii, mara huko kwa hii. You just ignored. Na sisi jamii yetu tunasema kwamba mambo ya kuwaship watu tulitoka huko. Ati mtu akipita hapa sisi wote tunatetemeka hivi ati papa wa Roma. Papa wa Roma kitu gani? Wewe ni mmoja. <laughs> Popo ya Kenya ni moja peke yake. Ukiona unasema wewe ni pop na huko na bibi mbili. Hiyo ni makosa kwa. <laughs> Papa wa Roma ni mimi ni mkatoliki just one. So mjaza kujipatia mataito ya ya kuokopesha sisi. Ya kutisha sisi. Hizo tunazoa hiyo kwa sisi hakuna. <laughs>
uh, I've managed to get back and we are back. And the conversation continues. Uh, what is happening? I know Goodyear is asking what happened during the funeral. Uh, Goodyear, uh, I'll explain that actually. I'll, I'll even play for you the video. That is what I want us to look at next. I also want to take this opportunity. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that so many people are really watching and have joined. And I hope they've subscribed to Afric 24 Hour TV. Uh, I take this opportunity to officially welcome uh, uh, Costa. Eh? <laughs> Costa, karibu sana. Hapa ndiyo tumeje feature. Uh, what we normally do here, we just do Kenyan politics, clean politics, irrespective of your affiliation. Eh? Uh, we no longer... Uh, complain, but you're trying to weigh in what happens uh, 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 politically, and we also try to come up with some of the solutions. Uh. So that is what keeps us here. I really appreciate that you've taken your time to watch, and as a, a new viewer, uh, I really welcome you. And will the, uh, I'm sure you've subscribed to Afric and you've shared with the friends and relatives so that they can also be able uh, to share. So, good year. What I'm asking now, there's something happening in the Mulembe Nation. There is a certain rift. I don't know if it is a rift or it's an awakening moment for the Mulembe Nation. There is something happening between the governor and Abtembea and Weta. And if I take it literally, uh, one, the Transoya governor, Natembea, have declared war against poverty, war against worshipping leaders, war against Ford Kenya, and war against one Masika, Moses, Wetangola. He claimed that Wetangola have really been intimidating the people of Western, specifically the Bukusu, to a point that they worship him. They think if it is not Wetangula, it's nobody. If you go back to the politics in uh, Bungoma or Bukusu, just get back to 2013, uh, when the 2010 constitution was first implemented in the elective position, uh, Wetangula had uh, a close run with somebody, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I'll get the name, and uh, in that case, Wetangula was uh, accused, yeah, Wetangula was accused of uh, mismanaging or something, he was accused of bungling the 2013 senatorial election in Bungoma, yeah, in Bungoma, and uh, there are so many people who lost lives, so people are saying that Wetangula have been using violence for so long, you've been are uh, using violence for so long to intimidate the opponents and to ensure that he remains the senator or a stated quo in uh, Bungoma. And now they're saying Natembea is out to wipe him. So what is happening? Will Natembea really manage to unseat Papa Waroma? When people talk of the 2022 elections, Wetangula is mentioned to have been the person who made the difference. They talk of that 200,000 difference, and they're saying that it's because of the Bukusu, or specifically those from Bungoma, uh, overwhelmingly voted for Wetangula and his presidential candidate that Raila lost. I don't know your view. You can use the comment uh, 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 section there to give me your view if you think that is true. Because you know that uh, uh, Wetangula had his election in 2013 disputed actually, and uh, he contested against somebody called Muscari Combo, and some things happened. There is a lawyer who represented uh, Muscari Combo in that uh, election petition, and the day that Wetangula's election was nullified, the next day that uh, lawyer was brutally killed, and people say that uh, Wetangula was responsible something like that, you've been using some former Ford Kenya goons. So the question that I'm asking is this gentleman called Natembea going to sweep the Tangula wave and unite the Mulembe nation? If you've listened to him, he declared war against 
poverty, ignorance, for the Kenya, and Wetangula in irrespective order. So he's fighting Wetangula, he's fighting poverty, he's <laughs> fighting for the Kenya, and he's also fighting ignorance in Mulembe Nation. So as I welcome my brother Hilary, Agudia is saying that George Natembea ruffles feathers. Where he goes, there is trouble. His speech leads to one thing. He is organizing himself for future leadership. Okay, people also argue that he's also organizing himself for future leadership because if you look at him, he's playing that kind of aggressive politics. He's one man that came from nowhere, from public service, you know where he was, and managed to become a governor. He's somebody who was underrated. Nobody knew that uh, Anatembea will become a governor. He surprised people with the kind of crowd that he was able to attract. And uh, for, for, for uh, I think for God's sake, but, but by good luck on his side, he managed to win. He managed to translate that crowd into votes. So uh, I, I'll leave that one for people from Western or people who understand the politics of Western, maybe to uh, talk of it. So welcome, uh, Hillary. I think in your absence, we really looked at uh, several things. We were looking at the handshake chronicles, how we've been having a handshake in this country. We also looked at the fact that Raila has always remained the constant factor in all the handshakes. And we are looking at how these handshakes have benefited Kenyans and the politicians who've been part of the handshake. We started by looking at the handshake between Raila and Kibaki, whereby they came up with something that was called National Accord that had some eight-point agenda, the creation of the prime a minister and two deputies that is the prime minister being the person who by then had the majority of the seats in the national assembly that was the odm party appointing a deputy and the prime minister on the other side the deputy prime minister being appointed by the, the president and after that we saw the cabinet got expanded so that this other side would get 50 the other side would get 50. We saw another handshake between Raila and Uhuru. They came up with something called BBI. You know the proposals that the why in BBI, I don't want to go into it. It did not see the light of the day because of the kind of position and being that we had a new constitution, people were able to go to court and challenge it. And right now, we are presuming that there's a handshake between Raila and William Ruto. Uh, though they don't need to shake hands, but there's a working collaboration. If you look at the rate at which the opposition uh, not the opposition, but the minority side have slowed down their opposition uh, uh, level, it tells you there's something cooking. They came up with something called NADCO. NADCO also proposed the same, same, same thing. So the NADCO, National Accord, and uh, the BBI, same document, different pages, different titles, different players. So I just want you to weigh on them in, in randomly without following any specific order, then we can also come up to what is happening in Western. There's something so serious that is happening in Western. Mm -hmm. uh, the Western politics is really shifting as fast as possible. And right now, Mdavadi and Wetangula are worried men. And you also need to take in, in, in consideration also the issue of uh, Nahomecha who also hails from uh, Transoya. She died for women rape, lost. She's now a CS health. Today, she said that people are fighting her because of jealousy, because she really lowered the NHIF from 500 to and such kind of things. So, Karibu, Bwana Hillary, and you can proceed. Asante sana leo, abaria leo, lakini. Salama Salmini. Nashukuru, Bwana. Nashukuru. Thank you so much for hosting this, uh, the, the, having this this platform for us to get information and also to give our our, our mind uh, what we think or what we see. But first of all, I want to thank God for this day. Number two, I want to thank Karambe Stars for winning four goals for uh, nil. Uh, we are seeing our, our national team is coming up and that is a good thing that we need to talk about even the sports. And we are seeing our young people doing well in Malawi. Congratulations to them. Coming to your question, uh, the four uh, or the, the last three handshake, uh, uh, being Raila the cons constant factor, that is a good thing. It shows the consistency of a person and uh, is a person that is not being swayed here and there. I think that is a good character uh, in the sense that uh, 
he mean he believed what he believed and he believed that uh, the peace to be there and the things to happen, we must get all, which I think it brings something that maybe some people will see that it's chaos, but I think that it, it brings something that uh, the government should be inclusive because the government is not for uh, for one person, but the government is for the everybody. <laughs> the government should entail everybody. So I think Raila bringing something that we don't see as much as you win, as much as you steal the, the election or I don't know what, how you win it, you need to incorporate everybody. And that's what we call handshake. We see what happened in, during Kibaki and Raila. Raila won the election and everybody knows and, and you see what was happening. So Kibaki uh, agreed to bring Raila on board and working together. We have seen several changes in, in, uh, in, in the country during Kibaki ruling time. Most of that, that time when Raila was prime minister is when we see the Vika Road came up. He's the one who drafted the Vika Road super highway. We didn't have superway anywhere. We have seen uh, so many uh, government lands who are being returned. We, have, we saw uh, even his brother, Buru himself, who built in Kisumu. During that time, his building was taken down. I know many people doesn't know that. But so we are seeing uh, so many things that uh, were happening during that time. During during Uru, we have also seen so many things that are happening. Uh, the handshake uh, bring at least uh, cohesion in the country. Everybody can be in peace. Everybody can go wherever they want. So all this handshake, uh, they have something. And now 2020, 20, and now what we're seeing between Ruto and Kibaki, it is the same thing. But also is is bring bare fruits because we are seeing peace. We are seeing dollars coming down. We are seeing Baba want to go to AU. This is the thing for our country because we are seeing uh, we have never have that position as a country. So this thing is not for Ayla, but also for the whole country because we are getting that post. It is Kenya. It is the name of Kenya. At least we have in the in the book of records that one time our our person was the AU chairperson in that country, and maybe it has some goodies that will come out of it. So uh, those are check things. Uh, they have been good, and also they are bringing changes because we are seeing a uh, constitution is coming uh, during Kibaki time. We saw the constitution being changed and everything, and that one is a good thing. The constitution has been somewhere, and and we said even now we are seeing some policies that are being implemented. Some as being even laws, which is a good thing to the country. It is not only for them, but even for the future. The leaders who are coming in um, will come. Will come after them. Because these people will not be there forever. That's what we will forget. But what can we learn? What we should we learn on all these things that is happening? We should learn that is our country moving to the right direction? I think it is yes, because when we have a better constitution, that one is a let you leo. When tomorrow you'll be a, a leader, you'll be a leader whereby the, 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 the constitution is being followed, where you where the laws are being uh, are there already for you, not you struggle. So all this struggling, I think, is just to make law. To work for the Monainchi uh, or to Mamaboga or to uh, uh, calling Chico, <laughs> you know. So all this thing is just a good thing for for the whole country. So now na nisawa na simbaya. Kuridi kwa natembea. I think natembea natembea. No, before you go to natembea, Hillary. Yes, I think you've talked of the uh, positive parts of uh, this kind of handshakes that have happened in this country. They've ensured there's some harmony and business, and they've also showed the Kenyans that, okay, you know, this government uh, belongs to all of us. And in each of uh, every handshake that has happened, we've always seen a mutilation of the constitution or an attempt to mutilate the constitution or to make some changes to the constitution. Save for the 2008, because we were having an old constitution, uh, they had to incorporate the National Accord 2008 into the constitution. And one of the recommendations in the Krigler report was that we try and have a new constitution. And that is something that was birthed when we inaugurated the 2010 constitution that we are having currently. In 2018, that is 10 years later, when Raila shook hands with Uhuru, there was an attempt to bring the BBI, and BBI proposed to interfere with or to mutilate or to change some uh, uh, parts of the 2010 constitution, though it didn't see the light of the day. The same is also happening with the NADCO report, like when you talk of the position 
of the leader of opposition. That is something that is not within our constitution. The prime cabinet uh, secretary or the prime minister, as some may call it, is not in our constitution. Don't you think, see that this is an abuse to our constitution or does it call for a constitutional moment so that we can review our constitution and put these things under the constitution? Is this is this on what is being communicated? <laughs> like, I don't think this is, we should call it uh, mutilation uh, because mutilation is like we are destroying or we are doing what I, I think is, um, is, is not that way. But remember, there's no any day that constitution be will be 100%. Why? Why this is happening? One, when Kenya gets the, when, when we get the, um, when we, 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 we we, 1963, when we get our, our our country as a Kenya and start running things, people are how many millions? People are very few. But at the moment, we have 51 million people or 47, 47 million. I think for, for the last uh, census, we are saying we're 47, that was 47 million. You see, every the, the country is, is growing. And when it is growing, um, one thing we need to agree that uh, everybody wants to be a leader as much as all of us cannot be a leader. So this constitution, why is being, uh, why is being, is being, uh, we are seeing is being mutilated, is that uh, to accommodate everyone, to 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 have a, a, a area that we can accommodate everyone. I don't think uh, it, it just happened that because we are growing, we are becoming uh, bigger in number and everything, and 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 this one everybody should feel part and parcel of it, and that I think is 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 really secure our country because. Uh, if we leave other people out, and you remember what Raila has been fighting for, whether you're coming from the smallest um, uh, uh, region or, or, or tribe or language, name it, you need to be seen as a Kenya, but as a Kenyan. What has been happening is that uh, you, you, you being, you being, you being, and, and this, we talked, I, I think we talked about this thing sometimes, but that we, we have been, we have been evaluated according to our population. You are a Luo, you are coming from this. Then we check how many people are coming for that region. You are a lawyer, you are a Kikuyu, you are... These are the things that... So we are asking that when we can be a president, if we go with the same constitution, where will there will be a, a, a president? Or when will they be, even in the government, there will yeah. be no time if we go with the constitution. But changing of the constitution, adding some few things, we are seeing these people are being uh, uh, incorporated in the leadership, which is good for everybody. So everybody should feel part and parcel of what? Of, 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 of the government, because that's the, that's the role of the government. The role of the government is to care, take care of the, everybody who's living in Kenya or everybody who's living in that country. So it means that everybody should participate, but not other people. So that, this, this has been happening and you've seen- Yes, Pen. Okay, Pen, just yeah. a minute. I'll get, I'll get to you. Let, you? Uh, Hila, let, let, let Hillary wind up. And Hillary, on the matter of uh, Natembea, will move next. Just wind up on this. Then uh, okay, we'll bring okay. in I, the so my point is that. Yeah, Leo, my point yes. is, my point, I want in brief. My point is that uh, what is happening is good for our country because every tribe should have a position in the government that I believe so, so that they shall they, they should uh, be part and parcel of the government and what is happening. So I think changing all these things, it's just helping the country. And and I think uh, Honorable Raila has been fighting for this, everybody. And sometimes back he was saying that even somebody who's coming to the Ogik, Ogik, Ogik community should also have a portion in the government. And if possible, they also should come up and be a president of the country. So I think that this constitution, I just are trying to amend it and, and, and accommodate everybody is a good thing for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Hillary. Uh, I get you, and I'll come back to you next. Maybe not now, uh, because uh, you you've talked of something like you also feel that there should be a time when Ogiek or uh, the, the, the smallest communities can be president. Somebody once proposed something called rotational presidency, whereby we say, okay, Akiku have, have been a president. The next, we don't need to see Akiku being a president. We can give it to this community and such kind of things, which when you look at it is also against uh, the rights, people are having political rights. Nobody should stop you from contesting simply because you are a Kikuyu or simply because you are a Luo, simply because you are a Taita. I'll come back to that one next. So let me welcome Pen. I know Pen uh, 
have lived and he is best positioned to talk of the handshakes that happened during the Moise and Kenyatta's. Some of us might not be able to talk of them because we, we, we didn't live uh, to see them. So, Pen, we've been having this kind of handshakes. Do you think we still need to be holding elections? Then after elections, then we say now the person who contested and the person who maybe became second uh, now sit somewhere and say that we now agree to work together, think together, and not to oppose each other. Why do we need to have elections in Kenya? if these things can be solved through uh, uh, this kind of handshakes and arg agreements. Why can't we just have a consensus somewhere called Waze and they sit down and say, okay, this time let Ruto rule and they work together with Rail and such kind of things. Hey, uh, Leo, Abari Ajioni. Abari Eni, Jijana, thank you very much. Salama yeah. sana, ukona minagani. Kwani unalala? <laughs> Abara ni meamuka. Lakini uko kwa giza kweli kweli wanyesha unalala. Ndiyo. Lakini yangu niko contribute kwa leo nyabaya na uyu gijana mwingine. Leo ni kweli. Nisizi tumeka for long time in Kenya and elsewhere in the world. But it is a very very interesting time that we live in today. Some of us remember when Mzee uh, Ugingo Dinga was defeated by uh, Moi. But we all knew that he stole the elections. Like in the, by that Thursday or Friday, Ugingo Dinga took uh, Moi to Kisumu. And a lot of people were seriously mad, but Mzee Ugingo said that if the IBC, you know, from the type of IBC, elected this guy as the president and announced him as a president he is the president and then it continued from there but to come to this day today the handshakes those are really really primitive ideas as far as we are concerned the handshakes are primitive that is even more naivete because the constitution that was written in 20 uh 10 is one of the best constitutions let those who win the elections govern the country but those who lose the elections have their say and stay outside the government and give us ideas as to how they will beat the present government to take over from them there was nowhere in the constitution of kenya that was envisaged a handshake what's a handshake for is only two people agreeing or three people agreeing. But yes, one of these persons had like 50%, 51, I mean 49%, and the other one got 50%. That's all over the world. Say, for example, Israel or United States, elsewhere. They don't have a handshake. They stay outside and fight for their ideas to govern the country in the future. So that's what we were concerned with when Madi Shukuku, when George Anyona Mosetti, when everybody, when Abuya Abuya Uzmanku were agitating for the multi-party system, they were not agitating to have a handshake. They were not agitating to have a handshake or anything of that form. They were agitating to say that, yes, you are in the government today, Moi, but we will do better the next time. We we'll take over this government, we'll show you what freedom means, what we will want to do. Yango si kusema mingi sana, wacha ni manisi ya maniseme na kwamba, leo vila umesiki, ome vila umeona nime kuwa Kenya kidogo na nime rudi, I was a diehard Uda person. But yes, really... tobo asiri, tobo asiri, Dec make a declaration. <laughs> <laughs> but I've really loosened up, because when the gentleman Ruto was saying that bottom up economics, I was telling you guys earlier uh, today, I mean, earlier that time, that the bottom up economics will not work if corruption is there. But now going visiting Kenya and the, you know, accompanying people to the police stations and seeing everything that is going on, you sit around the corner somewhere in the afternoon, the police come through and they're looking for Kitukido. 
and that is in itself corruption. And it has really loosened me up from Uda to be really independent. And uh, Leo Vilni Kwambia the other day, I've been kicked out of from the ODM or as new groups, forums. I've been kicked out even more practical in other forums. When I disagree with somebody like Omoro, the CPS Omoro is doing a wonderful job at this and that, but it is his ministry that is the most corrupt in the whole country. And you cannot say that if you are really a older person. I mean, uh, yeah, if you are really a older person, you cannot point that out. That's a weakness. I mean, if we have to have those kinds of weakness, my friend, the generations, I mean, now it's really my grandkids that are really, I mean, that are coming up. The generations of people, your, your, your people, your, your generation that is coming up, will not go anywhere with corruption being that high. If we have to live a better system or a better society, we have to crush this corruption. Be it small, be it uh, big land, come out, Margaret Wanjiru, be it anybody. I mean, of course, the president's uh, hotel, in Western Hotel, we have to ask, to know how did he get this? And how many people of his type that have had this and are keeping them? If we don't, then we should have a direction, a clear direction as to how we will rule this country from now to maybe 2027, 2032 and beyond. But Leo, the bottom line, and Lazima Niendele Kusema here all the time, the corruption is very, very high and there is nothing. There is everything the gentleman said before. If we have to have that corruption that high, my friend, there is nothing that you will say that will save that country. It is going down. I mean, and you wonder, is this president say, giving a free visa for everybody to visit Kenya and see how horrible the system is? Everybody in the world is free to visit Kenya without a visa or whatever, whatever. But you cannot yeah. even drive in Nairobi unless you know the roads. The pumps are everywhere. The every, it's just so corrupt, it's just so primitive and corrupt that the more years make it look even better because there were not too many cars, there were not too many population, too much population that like it is today. But it continues today of what Moi started. And you go to the city of Nairobi, say for example, the traffic was made for the 70s, but this is 2024 and the same traffic and the same roads, my friends, let us really, really open up our eyes to the reality of time and say that this is where we are going and this is where we have come from. Everybody in Kenya is very smart. Everybody is hustling, doing their jobs. Everything that you could even live on. But how does that move from this place to the other? Even your buyer, buyer son. So we have, I've seen, and now I am going back in June, July, but I would have to, you know, make my, show myself moving back to Kenya. But we have to point out the reality. In December, when I was in the forum, I was kicked out. But today, for some reason, they have moved, moved me back. But I have to point out the truth. The truth is still the truth. Corruption is so high. Thank you. Thank you, Rio. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Penya Gaka. And maybe uh, uh, there's a question I'm going to ask you maybe later. Hillary, I, I was looking at this thing. I think when you joined, there was this video of what is happening in Western. Of late, I think each and every day, uh, you've been hearing uh, Natembea talking of how he's going to economically liberate uh, Mulembe nation from poverty. And if you're keen, he declared war against poverty. He declared war against uh, this kingpinship and worshipping of leaders. He declared war against ignorance. And he declared war against Ford Kenya. And specifically declared war against somebody he calls Papa Aroma. That is Moses Wasika uh, Wachangula. So it has always been a war of words. And recently, you saw what happened in a funeral. 
the, the funeral had to be terminated. What is not happening? And what are the effects of this kind of war? You know, Wetangula is one of the longest serving elected leader in Western Kenya. And he is somebody who understands the Bukusu politics, save for the late uh, Kijana Wamalwa. He is somebody who understands the Bukusu politics to an extent uh, that uh, when he managed to do away with the Musikari combo in 2013 uh, senatorial elections, uh, he remained like a king of Bukusu and the Bukusu listens to him. But things are changing. Natembea seemed to be a new wave, fresh blood. You no, know, Natembea haven't been in politics. When you look at Wetangula, Wetangula started his politics in Ford Kenya. Ford Kenya is a party that dominated in the 1990s, 1992, fought for the multi-party. The members like Jaramogi, Nyachai, and Matiba separated and parted ways, and it emerged to different parties. If you talk of parties like LDP, SDP, ODM, NDP, these were birthed from Ford Kenya. So that one tells you how long Wetangula have been in politics. Unlike Natembea, who've just been a public servant, he's less than three years old in politics, but he's giving Wetangula sleepless nights. What do you think is the end game, Hillary? Uh, thank you so much for that question, uh, Leo. And I want to say that um, what we are seeing is a good thing. To me, it's a very good thing that uh, because politics doesn't matter how long have you been there what matters to me what have you been doing what have you been doing for the people it's not a matter you've been a kingpin of of of, of the certain community but you're doing nothing like 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 Kwetangula has been we have seen his leadership his leadership in bukusu he doesn't want anybody uh to come or to talk and to do everything and now natembea is a good guy and he has a good strategy and he realized that winning young people that's what he's doing now he's, he doesn't care about those old people he's now inviting all youths you see youths are following him and doing things it means that there's some people there's something that bukuso has been lacking that uh um Wetangula has not been providing and mm -hmm. Tembaya, being that in the public service he understands a lot as much as we've not seen him in the politics he has been understanding all the streaks, everything that is happening in the politics. Remember, these people have been used in the politics, so they know. And he was in a, a senior position whereby he can analyze and every knows everything, how everything is. So when he was going for the the the, the, the governorial post, he knows clearly. He knew what is happening there. He knows what people want, and and and, and that we are we are seeing his connection with people. Is really really pushing uh, uh, Wetangula so far, and if 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 uh, Wetembea get a chance to be uh, in the second term for these five years, he push it so well, we will not see we will not see uh, Wetangula. And remember, Wetangula is not now on the ground; he's in the senior position there. He's now forgetting to come down here, but Wetembea is here always, day and night. He's just <laughs> within the the Transia country, the county whereby he's going here and there, making sure that he meets people every day, is is telling the truth, is is telling people what people want to hear. That's what the Bukusu is now getting. And if Natembea can win Bukusu heart, and if not even all of them, but three quarter of them, mark my word, yeah. Natembea is one of the leaders that in future will be the lawyer leaders that the lawyers can count is a guy because he doesn't fear and he doesn't care uh, whom you are and doesn't care with the position, but he's telling the people the truth. He's just telling people, we lawyers have been in this thing, but what are these people doing? What are we gaining on this thing? There's nothing. And that's why you see lawyer community. We have so many tribes. Like, it's only Watangola. It's only Bukusu actually is being voting as a block. It's only uh, Bukusu. If you go to Samia, no. You go to even Maragoli, where Mudavadi himself is coming from. He's a DM dominator, dominant, dominant. Even Mudavadi cannot yeah, do yeah, yeah. Yes, with, with, with. So it shows something. There's something is lacking. So we are seeing that zeal. And and to me, that's what we want. Natembea is still young, number one. Number two, 
He has a vision for his people and, and, and to the larger country. So he's a guy that maybe after being governor after 10 years, is the guy that maybe will come to national politics, which is good for lawyers and for our country. We need people who have zeal, people who who, who look, uh, 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 who check the the, the, the 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 people who are down there, they are very important. Note that when you are in position, because you are bigger there, and then now you think that you are big. No, uh, I think he has been, actually you cannot even compare, to, since Wamala Kijana died, you cannot compare Wetangula with Kijana Wamala because Wetangula Wamala was doing a lot of things, was making lawyer. And actually, it tried even to the whole lawyer community to combine them, to at least bring them. <coughs> what we are seeing with, with, the, with, with the Natambea, if you go on the way he's going, I want to assure you after 10 years, is the guy that maybe we will look after M Davadi, Wetangula, and everybody that can bring even three quarters of lawyers as, as a whole, as a community. Because his leadership scales the way he does things the way we are seeing that the way he going to the office time management making sure everybody's on check uh, reaching out to young people women on the ground and everything go just check what that guy is doing on the ground is what people want that's that's what we want we want to people what are people saying not what we are saying up here but on the ground there that's those are the leaders that we want we want to, to reach our villages we want to reach people on the ground there and that's what metambea is trying to do now and this war that he's saying is not actually Netanyahu when he was talking about war, he was not talking about the physical war. And if you check so well, it is only these leaders who are bigger bringing the physical war. The war that he's been work, uh, he's been talking about is the war of of poverty, war of people to get resources on the ground. The the war that he's talking about, the war that let us not be wished, but let us be eye opener. Let us get all these things. Let us have a, a voice. Let us speak as a people where that people doesn't have. In Bukusu, it has been like Kikuyu uh, constituency, whereby only one person wants to speak. He doesn't want anybody. If you try to come up, they're gonna do it. So I think Nsembe is a good is a good guy. To me, I'm supporting him. And is, if we continue that way, then even these old guys will, will realize that these young people are coming up in a good way to support um, young people and to create opportunity for them. Because the Tangola has I've never could create an opportunity for anybody. We have not seen anything that they have done since Wamala Kijana uh, gone. Nobody is just fighting. Oh, Wetangula created opportunity. Immediately he got elected as the Speaker of the National Assembly. He took his PA, who was a former uh, Swahili teacher, uh, to replace him as a senator. Is that a not creating opportunity? No, he, that is that is that is having his own purpose. Whom did he? Uh, apart from is 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 apart from that past that guy who was just imagine Leo. <laughs> <laughs> you are PA, yeah. you are PA, you are PA, man. That is a started a trusted person. We want you to see taking young people. Taking young people from grassroots there, taking them to the somewhere. How many people have been employed through it, Angola? How many people go do your research? How many people have been have been have been employed through this guy? Not only is PA is PA, it means that a lot of things. Your PA is something that you are very very close in, and you will notice this if you if you go that well and 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 you and and you go on the ground, you realize that this person maybe is relative of Angola. So that those are the politics that we don't want. I get you. I get you. I get. Let, let, let me get uh, some word from uh, Pen Yagaka. Pen, I know, uh, despite the fact that you're maybe miles away from the country, but uh, I like the fact that you normally uh, follow what is happening in Kenya uh, politically. And sometimes you also take time to come and interact with it uh, physically. So I'm glad that you said that since you came to Kenya and met the Kitukidogo uh, phenomenon that you normally see on the television, you interacted with it one on one. It has made you to change your perception on how you view some other things. And on the comment section, I can see Gudje is asking you, Penya Gaka, are you still Ruto's supporter? I know you'll respond to that. But right now, I just want you to weigh on what is happening in Western. What is the end game? What do you think Natembea is aiming at? Is he on his own or there is somebody behind him? In a community I come from, there is this uh, uh, stubborn, slow animal called the tatas. Eh? Some people call it tortoise. So they say when you find a tatas on top of the table, there must be somebody who placed it there because it can't 
be there on its own. So is this Natembea the proverbial uh, tatas that is on the table? And who placed Natembea on top of that table? Bwana Pen. <laughs> no, um, Leo, Natembea has not been in politics for long, but when even if he was a provincial commissioner, he, he could speak yeah. stuff that uh, were very clear to the common person. And uh, some of us, we as the previous speaker said, we really want the Natembea for 2027, not in 2032. Because this gentleman, for the ne next two years, about, I supported fully. And uh, I thought that he understood what bottom up economics meant. I found out that it's a total failure. That's when, like I pointed out in uh, other forums, I've been kicked out. But to answer your question, Natembea, uh, some of us support him fully. Now he's the next guy we fall on to because he has been he has been speaking really what the common person understands. When I was in Kenya, he said that there was no police in Kenya. That all this guy is a head of he come is heading something that he don't understand. We find that to be so true because who are the police? What is the hierarchy of the police? What do they do? Willard Tembea was pointing out, they don't do anything. They are they are just to say a name. And uh, some of us really understood that coming to Kenya now, this time, uh, Leo, is to open our eyes. It's not really, some of us are too old to be waiting for that long, Willard the previous speaker said. Some of us want to see the change now, and then we leave the country, Leo Kwanini, being very clear put in uh, the right direction. It's not necessarily like in a Quaker map, American Nico. When I was in Kenya, I ended up in uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Rwanda system is more cleaner, is better than Kenya's that you can think of. The police don't even take the bribe because you. if you take a, a, a picture of a police that taking a bribe and you turn it in, they give you 5,000 Rwandan money. Oh, for just taking a picture. Good. For just taking a picture. So the police doesn't even take the bribe from you. I mean, if the bribe is there, it's very high or somewhere else. But in Kenya, it's a corruption. And I've talked to the people in uh, in uh, Uda, my friend, uh, Leo, and they say yeah. this is in crime. Do you think that uh, uh, Omoro doesn't know this? He knows it, but it will have to come to an end sometime. How can it ever come to an end if there is nobody giving a direction? If like your parents didn't say, go to school and work hard, go this and that. If nobody is giving you direction, how? How could you even solve that problems? So, Natembea, Viro, Lisa, some of us is a is a is, is, is a waking card for us. You know, Natembea, that you see this guy like Kronzo, if they come together, that will be the future of the nation. This is handshake, yeah. this this and that, what the, the Ruto is doing. He's talking very highly. But then when you see the reality of what he's talking about, it's completely opposite. Okay. You know, everywhere Ruto goes, he talks very, very high. I mean, he makes very good marks. It's zero. How can you get a hundred here and get zero the other side? So that, so as a what in the same to some of us who are not that hard ODM, we were only, I mean, Uda, 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 we were only supporting Uda for points of ideas that they were espousing. Some of us knew, and I was telling you this before. If this bottom-up economics that raised Europe after the Second World War, has raised, you know, Southeastern Asian countries, has raised, say, for example, China, the corruption has to be finished completely. Mutu Akimpati Kana Kaman, the director, anything in China and is said to be corrupt, he's not even charged to, he, he hung himself or he's hanged by the government. That's how serious corruption is taken. 
And until at the time that we take our corruption that serious, Leo, we are not going anywhere. We are just going to talk and talk and talk and talk around issues, talk about the handshake, man to mano. All these are just nonsensical ideas that don't make any sense. We cannot move one kid from their poor house to another. We cannot do anything. But if you do with that with uh, that corruption, the money will end up in the right direction and the money will hire the right people. You know, even the Nyumba, even to look for your cows, because you did not spend that money giving the police for useless when he's going to buy nyama and drinks. So there's so many trickle down economics on on uh, the green government versus a debt government. I hope I thank answered you, your question. I, I get you. I get you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just give it to uh, Hillary. Uh, you can maybe uh, somebody saying that good year. You have been absolutely incredible. And just try to step down and give you well deserved high five. You are crushing it. Okay, good year. Uh, some high five coming over there for you. We really uh, appreciate you uh, for always keeping it and ensuring that the comment section is uh, lit, active and uh, interactive. Uh, so Hillary, uh, maybe just as a, as you wind up or uh, as we wind up, uh, uh, there are a lot that has happened uh, this week. Uh, we've seen uh, the doctors strike. Uh, we've seen what is happening with the head teachers complaining that uh, the money hasn't uh, been remitted to the accounts. We've seen the threats uh, from the Ministry of Finance trying to uh, threaten the doctors instead of coming up uh, with a solution. And of course, once again, the world has been hit by one of the most horrible terror attacks. What has happened in Russia that has claimed uh, over 130 lives? Maybe if you just uh, summarize uh, and weigh on that, uh, I'll really appreciate and uh, lastly i'll also ask you the president assented uh, to the bill the affordable housing bill on tuesday already there is a case that has been taken to court that is challenging uh, 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 the, the act what is your view on that also thank you so much leo i think uh, the doctors um <laughs> Uh, it is so crazy that we are seeing our people are, are dying at the moment. Um, I think they're doing a good job. They need to be paid. And uh, what I want to say that uh, we have less doctors in Kenya. We have a government need to adjust. Apart from payment, uh, we've been talking to some few doctors. They're saying that they even the, the 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 equipment is not there. The laboratories are pathetic. You know. So these are the things that I think the government, the, the, the national government, should work on and make sure. One, the ethics of work should be a good um, area of work. They have materials, they have equipment, they have everything. And then come to salary, uh, it is important. And we see somebody is even graduating and then he's being frustrated after graduation. He stay like seven years. He has never given a license to be a doctor. These are the things that you're seeing that uh, doctors should go to the road as much as they can and they should not go to work, according to me, because we are seeing so many things happening. They are being threatened here and there. There's no money and the other thing they are being shooting out. I think uh, what they did last time uh, is so unfortunate that our people are dying. Kenyans are dying. It's so, it's so painful. And the government is not talking anything. They're not taking any chances. They're not doing anything. I think that is so unfortunate with the national government. They need to take an action as, as much as they can so that we can see our doctors are back to work, many doctors are being employed, our stores have equipment, have better laboratories, so that uh, uh, the common monoichi should get uh, good health or health care. Um, I, I think the government, national government is doing a little bit. Um, affordable housing, going to court is just uh, wasting a lot of time, wasting money, because it is already passed as a law, and, and the president is determined is determinant of making sure this this policy this law is working for him so i want to to say that there it is so unfortunate 
And we know the laws of Kenya, that case will go 10 years, five years wasting uh, public funds uh, uh, for nothing. I just say that it is already passed. Let the president move on. Let us, there are so many things that to look at. The doctors on the road, uh, our roads, people are dying in the accidents. We're seeing even students, we're seeing people losing their life all the time. These are the things that we need to push government to do. We are there, there's no, still, there's no good fertilizers. There's no much food. As much as there's, a, there's rain coming or there's been rain uh, uh, behind there, we need all these things to be worked on. So I think people should push uh, the government to work on these things because the housing, even if it is rejected, uh, and, and it is too late to me because I think it is already a law. It is not now just uh, uh, something that uh, uh, we, we want to think about. So housing, I don't want to talk about it much uh, because it is a past, but last time as I've said, uh, it is we don't need it at the moment. We don't need it. It was just uh, maybe creating uh, some money, some ways of looting uh, one inch money which is okay let them do it but there's so much so much crucial things uh the government should be acting upon one of them is healthcare number two is food number three is transportation that infrastructure infrastructure number three is now um education system is so bad <laughs> you know these are things that people should be working on there's no employment and employment is too much the craziness things are happening on the in the country these are things that i think the government should be working on and uh, thank you so much penny to see the sense now because you supported this government and uh, now you're seeing that these people uh they, they are not the people that should be the government today so you have seen the light and that's a good thing now. Welcome on board. Let us push this government to make sure they work for our people. Thank you so much, Leo. That's what I can say. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much. I, I also appreciate uh, your contribution. Maybe I'll get some uh, remarks uh, from Penn. I would have really wanted this uh, conversation uh, to uh, continue maybe uh, longer. I think it's a um, uh, few minutes to 3 a.m it's raining where i am so i'm worried i don't want what happened before to happen it's raining so if i continue i don't know what is i don't want to speculate you know what happens whenever you are in africa and it rains eh? <laughs> the connection between the rain and the electricity and such kind of things uh, pen experienced it when he came to kenya so i don't want uh, a situation of what happened a situation whereby all of a sudden we see darkness so pen i, I just want to get your a final remark on that Yes, uh, uh, Leo and uh, the other gentleman, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Let us move forward like this and let us stay positive. I mean, it is uh, depressing to see where the situation is in Kenya. But when you guys are in the forums like this from an international point of view, let us stay positive but point out the, the weaknesses in the system so that we can make it even better. Uh, some of us, personally, I do not necessarily see things from a negative point of view. I try to see things from a positive point of view, but when there are so many negatives going on in the ground, then we can point them out. Not necessarily to put those people down, but so that we can move them up. And our trajectory is always, and has always been, moving the people up from down in the uh, in the drudges that they are in. So that today, Leo Villet, I was supporting the system or the government of Ruto. I do not know whether I was bright or what, but I have seen the light. And uh, it's always good to see what is wrong with either yourself or somebody else, but not necessarily put them down or put yourself down, but try to improve on what you have seen. So that when I've been to Kenya this time, Leo, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm a little older now that I can see things very, very clearly. When it was a long time ago when Ugingo Diga was coming up and we were young, we were vibrant and we were seeing what we were seeing. Back then, uh, Rairo Diga was not uh, that prominent when he was trying to take away from his dad and then he went to Rangata and he, he uh, really 
resigned from the party, was in and won the election. Then we were vibrant and we were like, we want to see this. But now at our older age, we want to see where we can lift our kids from, our grandkids, to put them in the right direction. But we cannot fight those wars that we fight, were fighting in the 80s and 70s. We should now be able to give direction as to where we are going. And uh, my friends, everywhere that I have gone I, and I have spoken in my mind, I find resistance from both ODM and UDA. And that's a good thing because if you manage to piece off both of these groups, then you're doing something good. But if you are managing to piece off one group and please another, then uh, you're being a diehard in one way or the other. And I, I, I happen not to be that. Yes, I supported Ruto, but I can point out the stuff that is bad about Ruto. Yes, I didn't support Ray Rodinga, and I should not be looking at what Ray Rodinga is doing and his group, because if you didn't, if you didn't put your energy there, why should you put your energy on negative vibes? So that I want to see a better Kenya. We personally want to see a better Kenya, but you guys have said, and that's exactly what we are fighting for, and that's exactly where we are going. And like I've said before, and I'll repeat again, let us look at life from a positive point of view, because there are so many people that are negative, and if we continue with that, we'll end up nowhere. Negative doesn't get you anywhere. Positive gets you somewhere, at least that's what I would believe. Thank you very much, Leo. And you know I will be back coming back. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Pen. I always appreciate uh, uh, when you are present here and learning uh, from your council. It's really a great thing. Thank you so much, Hilary, for creating time, creating time uh, to join this feed. And I always welcome you that whenever you are free and you get time and you are alive, always join and thank you so much Goodyear. i think uh, you are the africa ambassador uh, much appreciation uh, to those people who managed to join this feed i have to appreciate um, zalendo i have to appreciate uh, joffrey buru i have to appreciate uh, kenyan revolutionary uh, we had uh, boniface uh, kimanzi i have to appreciate uh, costa uh, that is uh, mora uh, karibu sana mora na usikose kutazama afrik and you are most uh, welcomed uh, joffrey ruto i can't forget you your contribution black asante sana i'm hoping to see you tomorrow ujunge nami kwenye studio i really miss your contribution on matters affecting uh, this country that is mr black himself uh, joffrey ruto and everybody who made it today much appreciation i can see ruth apondi i can see judith anyango caleb ndolo and associates and everybody who managed to join this feed from this end i have to say thank you together when we put our heads together we are going to make this country a better country it's time that as kenyans that we've learned that uh, these politicians that we people follow and take the instructions, uh, we always help them to serve their interest. So as Kenyans, we need to ask ourselves before making any move or taking any action, are we serving our interest or we are serving the interest of the politician? So whenever we find that the interest we are going to serve is for the politician, then we should desist from helping politicians advance their self-interest. So if our interest is put forward, then I urge all Kenyans to march and ensure that their interest is served. For example, you saw the doctors demonstrating it was their interest. But when you find yourself in a demonstration where your interest is not considered, then we need to think twice and allow everybody to take their personal responsibility and uh, when we do that we are going to make kenya a better country and let us uh, endeavor to leave this country better that we've, than we found it 
and we should ensure that we don't destroy the future of the next generation. We know what has been happening. We had the people who lived before us. They destroyed their, 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 uh, their, their time. And when they were living, they kept on destroying the future of the people who are going to inherit from them. So we should not do that. It is the right time that we can restore this country and ensure that the people who are going to live after us will get a country that they can be proud of and say that really we are Kenyans. We don't want to die. Then later on, the people who live after us will keep on blaming us that had our parents, had our grandparents did this, this would not have happened. They need to appreciate that our, the people who lived before us did something to ensure that our future is secured. So with those many, 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 many remarks that we've made for the last four hours, I want to wish the ones who are sleeping a good night, if you're waking a good morning, and if you are going through your daily activities, a good afternoon and a good day. See you next time. Same time, same place. I was your host, Leo Nyabaya. I was joined by Hilary Ngondi, uh, Pen Nyagaka, among others. Let us meet tomorrow, same time, same place. But don't forget to subscribe to Afrik 24-hour TV. That is the only way you can support this program. And maybe a special announcement. On Wednesday, we are going to have a, a, a special show. We are going to have a, a special uh, interview with Wakili Kennedy Aboya. Kennedy Aboya uh, works at uh, the AU. So he will try to shed light and tell us the possibility of Raila Amolo Odinga becoming the AU Commission Chairman. Don't miss that. Subscribe to Africa 